For the second time of the season, the Mississippi Sea Wolves are in the state of New York as tonight they play the Elmira Mammoth for the first time ever. Hello everyone and welcome into the Mississippi Sea Wolves broadcast network. Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play -play from First Arena in Elmira, New York. Well, this is one of those situations tonight where something has got to give for either side. Both the Sea Wolves and Elmira Mammoth coming in with a record of 2 9 and 2. Sea Wolves fifth in the Continental Division. The Elmira Mammoth over on the Empire Division side of things, where they stand at fourth place with a slim one game lead on the number five ranked Delaware Thunder. And the big story coming into the weekend as well for the Mississippi Sea Wolves is Joe Pace. This past Monday, the Sea Wolves decided to part ways with head coach Phil Esposito as their leader effective immediately and that void will be filled for the time being by Joe Pace Jr. as he continues to serve as a CEO and defenseman for the organization. One thing worth noting is that Joe spent the 2018, 19 and 2019, 20 seasons as a general manager, head coach and player for the Port Huron Prowlers here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. And ever since he made the move to Mississippi, Matt Graham of Port Huron has taken over those major roles. But the reason we bring that up is because this is not Joe Pace's first rodeo taking on a multitude of responsibilities and big ones at that in the middle of the season. Again, the Seawolves having to make that coaching change as we 
get into the month of December. It's hard to believe we've been playing the regular season for nearly a month and a half at this point. And the Seawolves will have an opportunity tonight to kill their 10-game losing streak against a similarly struggling Elmira Mammoth team. So again, we are coming at you from First Arena in Elmira. This is the second time of the season that the Seawolves are here in the Empire State. The opening games were actually in the first weekend of the regular season when they visited just about an hour out from us here in Elmira to play a pair of games against the Binghamton Black Bears. Those were on October 21st and 22nd. Seawolves able to take three points in the standings. They lost in the first game by a 5-4 final score in overtime before winning their first FPHL game in history, 8-4 the ensuing night against Binghamton. So it was another lengthy trip on the bus up here to New York. And the Seawolves getting ready to play the front half of a two-game weekend series against this mammoth club. And most recently, the Seawolves coming off a 7-2 loss at the hands of the Columbus River Dragons. That was this past Saturday in Georgia. The Seawolves' goals were scored by Matt Carancy and Philip Wong. One thing to note about the Carancy goal is that it was and is still credited on the official score sheet to Chuck Costello. But looking back on the replay, it definitely is pretty convincing that Matt Carancy was the one to drive it home. We'll keep an eye on the future and see if that stands. But as of right now, the goal officially goes to Chuck Costello. And that 7-2 loss extended the losing skid to 10 games for the Seawolves. For Elmira, on the other hand, they played last Saturday, November 26, a 5-1 win over the Watertown Wolves, the Mammoth have now collected at least a point in each of their last three matchups after a very chaotic start to the season. It's very similar to where the Seawolves are right now. The difference is Mississippi was able to jump out to a 2-1-0 record in their first three games. After that, it just seemed to all go down pretty quickly. The Mammoth, on the other hand, trying to gain some ground. They were able to put together a pair of wins coming off of one most recently as we just talked about. So tonight should be very interesting to see the Mammoth know that the Seawolves have a world of pressure on their shoulders. Joe Pace with a lot of pressure on his as well. Of course, making his head coaching debut with Mississippi as a player nonetheless. So there's a lot of big expectations to see exactly how things start and where we go from here. We have a 7.35 scheduled puck drop here in Elmira, New York. Just about 10 minutes away. We'll take a break and come back as we continue the coverage of your Seawolves pregame show. After this, we'll take a look at some of the other games going on across the Federal Prospects Hockey League. You're tuned in to Seawolves Hockey on the Mississippi Seawolves YouTube channel. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your Seawolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. We welcome you back in to First Arena in Elmira, New York. Again, we're getting ready to start tonight's game. The first matchup of a two-game series between the Mississippi Seawolves and the Elmira Mammoth. One thing worth noting is that these two games will be the only times the Seawolves and Mammoth square off in the 2022-23 season. They are the only team in the FPHL, Elmira in particular, to not visit the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. So if you're a season ticket holder for the Seawolves down in Biloxi tuning in, the Mammoth are that one team you won't be able to see this season unless if both teams go on an incredible tear in the <laughs> back half of the regular season, able to overcome that 2-9-2 and record and make a nice playoff run to meet each other there. But 
Again, right now, these teams just trying to take it one game at a time, as much of a cliche as it may sound. And again, the Seawolves trying to break off this losing streak, which has now made its way into double digits. As promised, here are some of the other games going on through the FPHL. Right now, 7 p.m. start between the Watertown Wolves facing the in-state rival Binghamton Black Bears. They are deadlocked one-to-one, -one, getting towards the end of the first period. We have a 7.30 Eastern time start as the Columbus River Dragons are hosting the Danbury Hattricks. Again, that one's starting just minutes from now. The Delaware Thunder are visiting the Motor City Rockers. That one also starting up at 7.30. And then at 7.35, that'll start things up between the Carolina Thunderbirds as they go head-to-head -head with the Port Huron Prowlers. Again, that one with a 7.35 Eastern puck drop, the same that we have here in New York. As a reminder, the Seawolves are the only team in the FPHL that goes by Central Time. So every time they go on the road, it's Eastern Standard Time. You're going to lose that hour as you hit the road. Of course, there's going to be an exception there for the three Baton Rouge neutral site games, with one of those actually coming up one week from now. But again, we're just minutes away from the start of this one between the Mississippi Seawolves and the Elmira Mammoth. Fans still filing on in, in Elmira to First Arena. This is a facility with a lot of history behind it, much like the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. The Coliseum down in Biloxi used to host ECHL hockey with these similarly named Seawolves. And as for the Elmira Mammoth, of course, it had the Elmira Jackals for a number of years. They played in the old UHL and most recently the ECHL. After the Jackals ceased to exist in 2017, the Elmira Enforcers of the Federal Prospects League moved right in to fill the void from 2018 through 2021. And then, of course, most recently, you have the Elmira Mammoth in their inaugural season. This rink also holds the Elmira College hockey team, which started things up here in 2021. So dating back to the year 2000 when this place first opened up, a lot of hockey history behind it and a fan base which has really seen it all in terms of the leagues and the levels of minor professional hockey. Now approaching 7.30 Eastern here in upstate New York. Seawolves getting ready for their first of two matchups this season against the Elmira Mammoth. And those starting lineups getting set to be announced any moment from now. Seawolves making a couple of changes coming on into this weekend for the roster. Some of the transactions yesterday was announced that defenseman Brian Kerrigan was released on waivers. And then this past Tuesday, there were a pair of players added for Mississippi. You have forward Dakota Ulmer and goaltender Ian Wallace. They have joined the Seawolves tonight here in Elmira. Actually met them as they made the trip over from Port Huron in Michigan. But again, Wallace and Ulmer traded from Port Huron for future considerations. We saw Wallace, one of three goaltenders now on the team, out on the ice for warm up So between him and Harney, they will be the ones suiting up Blake Wyrick, the scratch. And in moments, we will see which one gets out there for that starting nod for the Seawolves. As for the Elmira Mammoth yesterday, defenseman Cordell Boyko signed a player agreement. And in exchange, defenseman Anthony Pulicino was released on waivers. We'll take another break. Coming up in moments, we'll have the starting lineups announced for each side. After that, we'll bring you the national anthem, the puck drop, and the play-by-play -play of the action for the 7.35 Eastern start from First Arena in Elmira, New York. The Mississippi Seawolves set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Elmira Mammoth again.
The National Anthem has wrapped up, and we're ready for the first matchup of the season. Just one of two between the Mississippi Seawolves and the Elmira Mammoth. Very quickly, your starters tonight for the Seawolves. It is Blake Cudmore starting things off on defense, along with Ethan Bush Anderson. The forwards, Philip Wong, Mike Falenga, and Matt Carancy. Ian Wallace in his Seawolves debut getting the start, and for the Elmira Mammoth, the starting five, Dalton Anderson, Stavros Solis, Chris Maritea, Nathan Campbell, and Yanni Lariakos. Tommy Proudlock, a former Seawolf who spent the first month of the season on the roster, is getting the start for the opposing team in that mammoth purple and orange. Should be a good one. The puck is down, and we're underway from Elmira, New York. Soilis. Knocks it into the attacking zone of the Mammoth as they go from right to left across your computer screen. Down on the far corner, it's Falenga dropping it back for Bush Anderson. Ethan Bush Anderson controls through the neutral zone, backhands it in on Proudlock, and he smothers it with the glove hand for your first whistle of the game, 20 seconds in. Seawolves tonight, as usual, on the road in their white jerseys. That includes the blue trim on the shoulders, blue numbers and lettering on the back, outlined in red 
red pants, white socks, and white helmets. As Mississippi wins to draw, it's Bush Anderson clearing it down the nearer side up the opposing boards. First one there, it's Blake Cudmore wrapped around the end wall again. And the Mammoth will fling it up but not out to the blue line. Wong able to keep it across. Second try works for Elmira in front of the penalty box wall. Now Wong back across the blue line on side for Mississippi. Left circle, this pops up in midair and it's collected by Stavros Soilis. Blung on deep to the Seawolves goaltender Ian Wallace again in his first game. The Mammoth wearing the purple threads with the white numbers and lettering on the back. Purple pants, orange socks and purple helmets. Across to center red, this is Carter slowing down on the nearer boards, fires it wide left of the net, and the puck rotates all the way out to the neutral zone as we played 1.15 of the first period, and we've got no score between the Seawolves and the Mammoth. Now it's Don Carter streaking around the backboards of Ian Wallace. He's sandwiched between a pair of Seawolves, and the rink-wide pass lands on the tape of Justin Barr. Bar, the team captain, pokes it on out to neutral ice. Now another scuffle in front of the penalty box wall. Mo Levac with his first touch of the game. He gets surged into by Vinny Soucy, and the Seawolves get a line change on the way. Centering pass to Levac. Only got one hand on it, and it's wheeled the other way by Daniel McKittrick. Two on one for Mississippi. Right circle shot, say he made, and the rebound was fanned on from the other side. Now another one in front, and getting shut down was Dakota Ulmer. Omer again in his first game with the Seawolves as it's played to the midpoint. Big bullet on by Bush Anderson and Proudlock were right off in the midsection. Another one from Bush Anderson at the midpoint and it wiggles its way into the left circle. New man on for the Seawolves. Bush Anderson on top of the zone. Drops the anchor on the end wall for Dakota Omer. Omer's pass gets intercepted by Levac and he fishes it to the Seawolves blue line. Right in front of those benches off to my left side. Rink wide pass to Ulmer. Streaking right circle. Drops it back for Costello. And his wrister got deflected away on the shin pad of Nathan Campbell. 0-0 game. 17-15 to go in the first period from Elmira. Here's Tyler Pekarski. Picking it up on the far half wall. Tries going zone to zone. Alexa to go for the dump and change instead for Ian Wallace. Wallace paddles up. Right side point. Now on the backhand. Here comes... Cordell Boyko, and he wasn't able to direct it on the net. Zay Crawford, another former Seawolf who was with the team during training camp, not able to get things going his way in between the circles, and Elmira will bring it on in down to the left corner. It's Tim Payne with some room as he rifles it on out to the Mammoth Center logo. Campbell dipping back to the Mammoth blue line for a couple of moments, and they're trying to get some new bodies onto the rink. Now forwarded for Campbell. He whiffs on the passing attempt for Moskul and Wong able to scoop it right up for the Seawolves. On the right wing, it's Matt Carancy on side. Carancy reversing for Wong. Wong lets it fly. And the save is made by Tommy Proudlock. Well, Proudlock this season, eight games played for the Mammoth. Putting together a 1-2-0-1 record, a 4.82 goals against average, and an 8.80 save percentage for Ian Wallace of the Seawolves. Six games with the Port Huron Prowlers this year. He has an 0-1-0 record, a 4.04 goals against average, and an 8.96 save percentage. Face off in the right circle, slid over on the four half boards, and the Seawolves able to get it back in their favor. Bush Anderson. Backpedaling to the blue line. Now McKittrick in a stalemate with Dimitri Daniluk. Daniluk flips it wide side. Back across at the blue line for Liriakos. And Bush Anderson able to jump right out in front. Seawolves back from square one. McKittrick going back and forth up the four boards with Yevdekimov. And his shot goes over the crossbar, landing into the corner. Yevdekimov took a little jolt there, picking up a stick behind the cage. McKittrick. Coming down the nearer side, say made by Proudlock, and he couldn't keep it in the glove hand. The Mammoth on the counterattack. It's a one-on-two. Cudmore able to dispossess his man. That turned out to be Stavro Soilis, and the centering feed just goes offline. The puck skitters to the right point, and Costello spins on out to the neutral zone. 
Right circle he comes with a shot on. Kicked away by Thomas Proudlaw. Everyone coming together on the far hash. Tap that into the circle and the Mammoth with numbers out across the middle of the ice. Costello picks it loose. Back down towards that far corner. Goes long distance for Dakota Ulmer. He wipes out underneath his feet. And the Mammoth will start things up again. 14-43 to go in period number one. It's Seawolf 0, Mammoth 0 from First Arena in Elmira, New York. This puck caught a couple of sticks out in front on its way down to Joe Pace's first game as a head coach and player for the Seawolves. As this comes off the skate of Mo Levac, waiting in the trapezoid area, back out in front. And he couldn't hook with his man Nick Golo. Left point for Campbell. Campbell looks, shoots on, and Wallace squeezing the pads together. Mammoth keep the cycle rolling. It's Golo from a tight angle. Whacked at by Pace, upstairs but not out. Campbell lets it fly again. A floating puck on the skate blade of Wallace. Seawolf still unable to clear. Susie waves at it out to the neutral zone. And they're finally able to get that breather and a couple new men onto the ice. We've now played six minutes of regulation on some Friday night hockey. Seawolves and Mammoth going at it back and forth. A pair of two nine and two teams trying to get back in the wind call. Now it's a Mammoth one on two. Lavac peels to the near side post and he wired it into the corner. Now shoved out the center. Mike Falanga at the center red with a through feed for Carancy. Wasn't able to slow it down. Now stick to Joe Pace. Pace in his own left circle, a little one touch. Coming now for Philip Wong. Wong got stuck in traffic. Elmira down to the left circle of their own ice. Wrapped around by Falanga. Falanga on the near half wall. Takes a 360 on the goal line. A little shove from behind provided by Parker Moskul. Seawolves climbing up the near wall. Now left point hammered through traffic. And Thomas Proudlock flashes the leather. 13.01 left in the first period. No score between the Seawolves and the Mammoth. We head to your first break of the night. You're tuned in to the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hockey is back. The Mississippi Seawolves are ready to pounce at the Coliseum. Great. It's $10. It's the comeback of the pack. You won't want to miss it when Coach Joe Pace and the Seawolves take to the ice. Call 228-594-3700 or visit MississippiSeawolves.com for single game tickets. We resume play after your first media timeout of the night from Elmira, New York. Your score is 0-0 as we have played 6:59 of this Friday night game between the Seawolves and the Mammoth. Face-off coming back in the Mammoth zone off to the right of Thomas Proudlock. Daniel McKittrick slated to lean on in here against Dalton Anderson who previously played for the Columbus River Dragons. So the linesman gets the signal to drop the puck down in the left circle and we're back to action as this is skittered through the low slot. Now could be a breakaway for the Mammoth in that right circle shot coming and it never reaches the net. It was Stavros Soilis who's had plenty of touches so far in this game ended up having the stick lifted from behind and was ultimately jammed towards that four post. Liriakos left wing side into the high slot Soilos Got halted again, back in between the rings. This is Justin Bohr, the Seawolves team captain. And he'll drop it on back to the side of the cage. Bohr taking matters into his own hands out across center. Discards for McKittrick on the right glass. Stabs it to the low slot, popped over the cage. Now Bohr below the goal line, exchanging sticks with Don Carter. A little stalemate down low, back up top. Shot coming from Payne. And that leaves the scuff off of the end boards as the Mammoth Wipe it on out to neutral ice. Golo onside with Carter, and he just gives it on up for Justin Barr. Barr with some experience here in Elmira. During the 2010-11 season, had a five-game call-up with the ECHL's Elmira Jackals. The one goal he scored turned out to be a game-winning goal. He still has the puck to prove it. And he was actually passing it around to show his teammates earlier on today. So he knows First Arena very well. 
some fond memories for him as the Seawolves get to work back in the enemy zone again, skating from left to right. Scoreless game, 11.25 left in the first period, and it's fished on out to the middle logo by Elmira's Don Carter. Carter with pace to beat, pace able to beat him by a couple of steps to the puck. And we go for Epright at the center red. That kicks off of his skate, and he's shoved off by Tyler Pekarski. Pekarski, stick handling his way across the Elmira blue line and floats one under Moskul's equipment. Back and forth we continue to go. Waiting at the enemy blue line, here's Lucas Helen. He hands off for Epright. Epright returns for Helen, and he hacks it high into the mesh netting just over Tommy Proudlock's head. Well, this mammoth team coached by Glenn Tomaris, the Potsdam, New York native, has head coaching experience dating back to 1987 at Elmira College. Tomaris was inducted into the Elmira College Hall of Fame in 2021. Face off in the Elmira ice, and the puck is smoked on out in front of that Seawolves bench. And Bush Anderson able to retrieve. He goes across neutral ice for Matt Carancy. Carancy with resistance from Danila. Able to keep it on the lumber. Now wedged away by Parker Moskul, a two-on-one. Right wing side, pulls it a low slot, and no shot comes. Wallace broke down in the split position. And the Mammoth so far, a number of chances, but they can't seem to get out of their own way. Now the Seawolves with a three on two. Carancy on the near circle, gets it to the forehand and the puck squeak loose over to the four glass. Right wall, it's Stavros Soilis surveying his options, makes way for Boyko. Boyko on to reverse, Moskul able to wave a shot through traffic. It ends up hitting Philip Wong and he couldn't dig it out of his own skates. Now Justin Barr is shaken up down on the goal line, slowly making his way back up and he will stay in the game here. Liriakos with the drive. That goes wide right of the cage. Kept in on the far point, courtesy of Dalton Anderson. Worked around the end boards once more. It's a two on two scramble. Wong trying to joust it free past Dalton Anderson, but on they rumble behind Ian Wallace. Seawolves able to win the draw. Forked on out across the center red. Mammoth win it right back. Liriakos up the gut for Anderson, hit a stick, and it lands innocently down there on the right corner. Midway through the first period with 9-10 to play, and it's nothing-nothing between the Seawolves and the Mammoth. 200-footer one end to the other. It had the deflection out across center ice, so play will continue with Liriakos. Liriakos high slot, and they score. Stavros Soilis going over that left shoulder of Ian Wallace and in as the Mammoth take a one to nothing lead. Well, it seems like Soilis has been out there for the majority of this first period and he's gotten plenty of good looks on Ian Wallace. Just an absolute laser from the high slot for the Mammoth's first of the night, 8.55 to go in this opening stanza. Well, he was joined there alongside Yanni Lariakos, who was able to feed him that pass. And we'll have an extended stoppage of play here as the Seawolves now regroup down one to nothing here from First Arena. Some extended conversations going on between the officials, and now you have a linesman down there on the far corner and they open up the Zamboni door. Looks like they're saying something to perhaps the ice crew, and that's exactly what's going on. There's a pile of ice that they're trying to shovel up, and we have the goal call being made. Chris Martea, the secondary assistant, on the goal scored there a moment ago from Stavros Soilis. Yanni Liriaco is able to give him the pass, and you have two members of the ice crew walking their way down into the Seawolves' end right there towards the near half wall. So they'll tend to that specific area, and since it's over to our near side of the broadcast booth, we're unable to see exactly what the concern is. I'm not too sure if it's blood. I see a couple of red spots down there, and 
I think that's what it is. And you remember Justin Barr, he was laying down there on the corner a couple of moments ago, slowly making his way back up to his feet. Yeah, there is some noticeable amounts of blood now that you look at it down in the low slot. But if it indeed came from Justin Barr, he definitely played it off well. You wouldn't have suspected that, yeah, then he sort of noticeable injury. Finished up the play and eventually made his way back to the bench. And as we look over at the Seawolves bench, Barr is being tended to by the athletic trainer Cam Nelson. So you can only hope the best here for Captain Justin Barr as we continue to scrape away on those drops of blood on the ice. Well, again, it's a one to nothing Mammoth lead with the opening strike moments ago from Stavros Soilis capitalizing from in between the circles over that left shoulder of Ian Wallace. Wallace making his way back to the Seawolves bench and we're just about ready to get play moving again. 11.05 gone by in the first period and we thank you for tuning in wherever you may be. Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play -play from upstate New York. Whether you're watching at home or at our three watch party locations, Sully's in Goldport, Walk-Ons in D'Iberville, or Val Sports Bar and Grill in Ocean Springs, thank you again for making us a part of your Friday night. A couple final specs being collected here by the ice crew at First Arena as again we get ready to resume this game. Justin Barr appears to be all right on the bench. And it was one of those plays that Went down on the goal line with the play ensuing up high in the zone. So it's likely that perhaps Barr took maybe a stick to the face, something along those lines, but was definitely shaken up. And in a couple of moments, we will again get action resumed. Well, this is the first season of existence for the Elmira Mammoth. Same goes, of course, for the Seawolves. And these two markets, whether it's Elmira, New York, or Biloxi, Mississippi, where the Seawolves call home, uh, they both have deep roots in pro hockey. And the ECHL, the similar name Mississippi Seawolves, competed with the Elmira Jackals from 2007 through 2009. Well, Justin Barr has now jumped off of the bench and he is skating back towards the locker room area where the athletic trainer follows him. So Barr is going to get further evaluation after having drops of blood coming on the ice on a play moments ago. Players taking their positions back out across the neutral zone and we're ready to get things moving again. So on the face off, first touch won by the Mammoth over on the right side. Again, the goal moments ago coming from Stavros Soilis, making it a one to zip game and we have a whistle just seconds after the center ice draw. This face off directed over to the near side red dot. See Dakota Ulmer back out there for the Seawolves as a part of that joint trade with Ian Wallace from the Port Huron Prowlers. Now we see both sides going to the bench. Now let's see what this is about. Looks like this is going to be a media timeout. So we'll take a breather on the broadcast. 847 left in your opening stanza from First Arena. Your score, the Elmira Mammoth 1 and the Mississippi Seawolves 0.
Seawolves hockey continues from upstate New York with 8.47 to play in your first period. Seawolves trailing 1-0 on the goal moments ago from Stavros Soilis. And we'll have the face-off to the near side red dot. Payne able to win that. And it's driven on out to the neutral zone. Lucas Helen with a two-on-two. Down the middle he comes. Shot on to Proudlock. And he trapped it off in the midsection. A little wraparound attempt. Not able to be directed on by Payne. As he is knocked off of the puck. Fanned out the center ice. And Nick Golo not able to play it cleanly. Back we go for Tim Payne. Over the stick of Ulmer at center ice. Golo. Kicking up the heels, left wing circle shot, and that's off of Wallace's skate blade. They'll cycle it over to the right circle, up top shot, and that's another one just evading the cage from Cordell Boyko. Cordell Boyko, again, one of those mammoth newcomers as we have an Aaron pass sink down the ice. It's an icing against Mississippi. Boyko played his lone FPHL game this season before tonight. On October 21st with the Danbury Hattricks. Didn't have to go too far. Coming over here for Elmira to continue his season. So the puck meets the ice down on that far circle. And the Seawolves get the forwards motoring back up the far wall. It's Marvin Powell able to hook with Costello. And Costello hooks it down the remainder of the rink as he's off on a change. One to nothing Mammoth leads. Seven minutes, 41 seconds on the board in your first period. You have Dekimov wipes out on the blue line. Here's an opening for the Mammoth. Moskul down the near wall. Swipes it out in front. Nobody there to pull the trigger, though. Stashed off the right wing boards. Jeff Epright. It will do the honors there for the Seawolves. And Elmira able to go circle to circle. Now at the center line for Leeson. Leeson not able to do anything with it, but he puts the pressure on. High slot shot. That had nothing behind it. And a redirect comes straight over to the Seawolves defenseman, Vinny Susi. Ian Wallace touching up on the end wall as he'll put the give and go for Joe Pace. Pace lines it on out to the middle of the ice. Chip back across by Liriakos. Pace on the far end line. Through center on the pass all the way down. And we have yet another icing going the Seawolves' way. So Joe Pace has had a ton on his plate as it is, but of course last Monday even more so after being named the interim head coach of the Seawolves team while also being the CEO and the defenseman already. During the first and second intermissions tonight, we're going to play an interview with him, which was recorded earlier on this week, talking about uh, some of the things that are to be expected as a result of that coaching change and uh, some more information for the Seawolves fans as Vinny Susi handles his way over to the left circle, goes D to D for Joe Pace. Pace knifes it across the center line. Now Campbell on the backhand for Liriakos. Liriakos returns for Campbell down at the tight angle, spins away at the corner. Campbell. Assessing his options. Now a no-look pass coming to Dalton Anderson. Anderson swings across the line. Down on the right circle. Carancy provides the pick away. Two on three for the Seawolves. That doesn't go too far. Dalton Anderson able to stash it over on the point. Now down the rest of the ice it goes for Wallace, but no icing comes. Bush Anderson clearing outside for Carancy. Carancy pitching for Falenga now at the high slot. And he gets sandwiched between a pair of mammoth. Knuckler on from Ethan Bush Anderson on the blue line. And offside is the call against Bush Anderson. Not looking too happy with the linesman on the stoppage, but we'll take the draw back out to the red dot. As a reminder, this is the opener of a two-game series between the Seawolves and the mammoth here in Elmira. The only two times this season that these teams will go head to head. We're back in the Seawolves ice. Golo off to the races with Bush Anderson. Now it's Falenga kicking out the center for Costello. Costello parks on the left point. Still looking down the ice between the legs for Bush Anderson. Kick save by Thomas Proudlock. Shots on goal 10 to six in favor of the Seawolves but they trail one to nothing as we approach the final five minutes of this opening period. Tyler Pekarski on his own kick plate. 
sends it up the nearer wall. Mo Levac able to dish out. Don Carter with open ice for Golo on the left half wing. Now it's Ulmer with a two on two scramble. Able to work it outside for Justin Barr. And again, you remember Barr had some blood drawn on him earlier on in the first period. Had to leave for a little bit of time, but quickly resumed back into play. Broken stick out on the ice. You have the Kim off with the loose piece of rubber. Tried flying it to the low slot. Nobody there for the one-time drive. Now a little tapper by Yev Dikimov on the sharp angle. And eventually floated on out to center ice. Payne gets to rim around for Yev Dikimov. Yev Dikimov with a slap shot. And that goes off a Tim O'Connor stick. Payne on the near circle. Almost got his skates taken out from underneath him by Nick Gullo. And the liner comes in on Thomas Proudlock as he hangs on at the midsection. One more media timeout in your first period with 4.19 to spare. The Seawolves trail the Mammoth 1-0 on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. Getting ready to wrap up the remaining four minutes, 19 seconds of your opening period on this Friday night in Elmira, New York. Your score, one to nothing, Mammoth up over the Seawolves. As the Mammoth win this face off in the right circle of their own ice, wheeled out, two on one for Leeson. Leeson on the near post, threads it through, but couldn't shoot it on net. Seawolves got away with another one there, but they're playing with fire a bit too frequently. Now it's McKittrick looking for a man down low in the right corner. And he lined it right off the opposing Cordell Boyko to break up that centering feed. Now belted through center. Zay Crawford in front, backhander, and that doesn't reach the cage. My goodness. Things a bit too close for comfort, and the whistle blew as the net behind Ian Wallace popped up off the pegs, and went back down on top of him. I don't think it needs to be fixed right now, but Wallace trying to get the windmill motion in effect, maybe even had the line of vision obstructed there, but just tried to work with whatever he could. Face off coming to Wallace's left side. That's over on the glove hand. They congregate over on the half wall. Pace, able to rescue it down on the goal line. Hopper coming out the center. Now Carranci with a catch on the left-hand glove. The lone man in the enemy zone for the Seawolves. He'll chip it down the left wall and back over on that right side of the end glass. Another stalemate in the corner. Pace standing on the outside. And it's sawed loose by Carranci. Carranci on the backhand, dispossessed. That's Nathan Campbell getting the work done. Campbell flies it the rest of the way down for Ian Wallace. He paddles to the right point, unable to clear it. Final three minutes of the first period have arrived with the Seawolves down three to nothing. Here's Stavros Soilis, the lone goal scorer this game so far, trying to corral his way up the left point. And it's released behind the net, over into that right side of the post. Point blanker on, and it skitters free behind the net. Pace. Has it given away, shot right into the bread basket of Wallace. And he'll wait for the stoppage of play. Shots on goal now 12 for the Seawolves, 8 for the Mammoth, who currently hold that one goal lead. Now Soilis exchanging some words with Bush Anderson. They'll be escorted apart from each other. We'll have to draw to the near boards. See that Seawolves team just before the faceoff coming together, talking in a bit of a circle. 
Something you have to do when you don't have an active coach behind the bench. Rather a head coach player combination. O'Connor knuckles it off at the end wall and the net was kicked off the moorings by Wallace. He was just trying to close that gap off to his right side and the blade was able to dislodge it. As we'll do it all over again to Wallace's right. Again, Wallace in the Seawolves debut, a part of that two-man trade. Him coming to the team along with Dakota Ulmer. Wound up on the end wall, over to the right hash. Caught up in the equipment of Chuck Costello. Now jostled free on the corner, a little jolt from behind, placed on to Don Carter. Left point drive by O'Connor. And that's into the left pad of Ian Wallace. Ulmer on the counterattack for the Seawolves. On the right circle. Wraps it around the back wall. Peels at the midpoint. Shot through traffic by Cudmore. And it got blocked out the center by the Mammoth Don Carter. Now with a breakaway and he couldn't locate it on the tape. Well, the Mammoth have had chance after chance in the first period. But not a whole lot doing their way. Costello goes down, and that's a penalty against the Mammoth. That's the first infraction of the game. So the Seawolves head to the five on four with a buck 37 until the first intermission and a chance to level up the scoreboard. It is a trip being called against Cordell Boyko. Despite the Seawolves' troubles this season, they have the second best power play percentage in the Federal Prospects Hockey League, standing at 24%. Mammoth PK, eighth in the FPHL at 79.4%. Definitely some room for improvement there, so the Seawolves with a chance to jump all over it. And it starts with Yevdokimov on the right wall. Flings it midpoint. Yevdokimov with the pass on the near circle. Wide side again for Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson looking around. Goes near post for Yevdokimov but he whiffed on to Rister attempt, saved by McKittrick. McKittrick on the end wall, climbing up that left dasher. McKittrick, midpoint, still looking for a view, shoots it wide at a cage, and now bar off to the races to keep it inside the zone. Not able to do it. And we have 125 to go on this Elmira penalty for Cordell Boyko. Ian Wallace able to freeze it behind the cage, and it's Bush Anderson coming back around. And almost a breakaway for Moscow. Man, things just sloppier than before here for the Seawolves. Yev Dikimov able to take it back over for McKittrick. McKittrick brings it across. Now down for Costello on the half wall. Tight angle shot, and it shimmies to the midpoint. Susie winds and drives. That goes off on a proud lock glove save. Rebound, hit a defender. And another 200-foot dump down for Ian Wallace with 20 ticks to go in your first period. Shimmied between the benches. It's Mike Falanga. Falanga on side with Carancy on the left wall. Into the trapezoid, doubled up between a pair of men. Last second chance. Left circle, saved by Proudlock, and the whistle blows with 1.1 on the board. Well, Proudlock has been red hot so far up to this point, shrugging away all 14 Seawolves' chances. And Mississippi with one last chance here to the left side of the net to win the draw and throw over they can on. They won't do it. And after 20 minutes of play from First Arena in Elmira, New York, your score stands the Elmira Mammoth 1 and the Mississippi Seawolves 0. Both teams going into the locker room as we begin this first intermission report. And as we mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, we will flip you over to a scheduled interview we had this past Monday with Joe Pace and the Chief Administrative Officer of the Seawolves, Sarah Carmen, uh, talking about the coaching change with Joe stepping up at the helm. Here's how that sounded on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. Hey guys, Sarah Carmen here, your Chief Administrative Officer with the Mississippi Seawolves, and we're sitting here with Joe Pace, who is our Chief Executive Officer. Coach, um, wow, what a day. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? Just, no. yeah, but uh, yeah, we, we got a lot accomplished today, you know, 
the most most important thing is uh, you know we got the guys on the ice we got a good skate in and you know I think everyone that stood on the other side of the glass and watched us saw how much fun we had today yeah. and uh, it wasn't a mess around practice it was all work no play and everyone had fun yeah I mean I it was able to be there at the end of practice and see you guys laughing and and actually smiling and, and talking and, and gelling as a team. So I guess my question is, and I, I obviously know, but for the fans that are going to be tuning in and, and watching this hopefully live on Facebook or on the replay, um, you know, this, this seems sudden to so many people. I've, I've seen the comments on the fans page. I've seen the comments everywhere, FPHL everywhere, talking about, well, this just seems so quick. And it is early in the season. What has made the decision for us to let go of a coach so early in the season? This is not our first time around the block doing this. Uh, you know, this is a time of the year when you want to be picking up points. You don't want to be into March and April and saying, ooh, I wish I had like six more wins. It's like you get those six wins early in the season. You usually don't get them late in the season, especially if you're struggling looking for that because everyone's ramped up for playoffs. Everyone's got the best roster they can by then. So. Uh, this is the time of year you sneak out some wins, and we really haven't done that in a while now. It's been weeks, could be a, over a month. So, yeah. uh, you know, it was hard, but, uh, you know, it was almost a full college football season. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, it's, been, it's been a little rough, I agree. Um, you know, it's, it, it obviously didn't come as a shock to those of us at the chief level, but it is definitely a, a shock to the, to the players, I'm sure. What was the reaction and what was it like in the locker room when you had that discussion today? Can you talk about, can you share a little bit with us about where the team is at? Uh, you know, a lot of guys were, you know, even if they saw it coming, they're still caught off guard because, you know, it was, it was Monday morning, you know, we're coming off a day off and, uh, you know, it, it just, it had to be done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we need to do everything we can to make the Seawolves a successful organization. That's why I brought you on. Yeah. You know, you've been such an amazing asset to us. Uh, everyone else on the staff has helped me so much over the last year and a half. Like, the, we wouldn't be here without the people around us, and we make a good team. We, you know, complement each other well, and we had one component of our staff that, you know, it seemed like, he didn't want to work with the rest of us. And, uh, you know, I am in a position where I get to work with everyone. So to have someone, you know, refuse or, you know, fight back against, you know, kind of the culture we've created here of, you know, team, you know, uh, it's just hard. Like I get pulled in a lot of different directions, you know, especially walking in for a game day. Mm -hmm. You know, I sometimes dread it because I know, you know, I have, you know, one or two people grabbing me before I even get to the dressing room, but I know I have those responsibilities. I know that happens. Uh, now, you know, I really, I won't get the luxury of even leaving on a game day. So as you guys walk in, I'll just be here the whole time. But uh, I want to do this, you know, right now, just, just weather the storm. It's been a rough couple of weeks and I think everyone saw today how upbeat the team was and just fun that we were having after a quick meeting just talking about culture and change and you know what we're looking for that is true and and i know that we've been trying to shift kind of the culture here and we we want to have something more positive uh, that's been kind of a thing that we we've all been working on is making sure we're bringing positive and yes maybe we need to make changes but let's also look at what we're doing correctly and how do we build on that it's it's been interesting to talk to some of the guys today and, and kind of hearing some of their stuff. Uh, one of the things I am seeing on the fan page is, of course, people are looking at the multiple hats you wear. You're the chief executive officer. You are the hockey operations um, director. You are now um, a defenseman, number 13 on the team. You're now the head coach. You know, there's the joke now, are you going to be driving the bus, which we're trying to find a bus driver. But, you know, it's a lot of hats, but if I understand correctly, in Port Huron, you actually were, what, one of three staff members on the team, and two of you were on the ice during the game. Um, this is something you're not, you know, 
this is no new thing to you. We have an How army we here. We have an army here compared to what Port Huron has to work with. And uh, shout out to Matt Graham and Alex Johnson. You guys are doing an amazing job this year. I'm so proud of you guys. And uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. So watch out. You guys are in trouble. <laughs> They are. He ain't probably, I'm not, I don't think you're wrong. We got them three and three. We got Ban Rouge and two at home, and it's not going to be like your last trip down here. I promise you that. <laughs> no, and, and it's I, it's something that you've done, and, and I think that's the thing, too, is um, there is a difference between what people see as, like, oh, he's doing all these things, but you're holding on to hockey operations, so essentially anything to do with players and anything to do with the ice, and, of course, I handle, of course, like all the things off ice. So I'm taking care of you game day operations. Call her. <laughs> game Don't day call me. Game day operations, you know, player appearances. I, of course, oversee the guys in the office taking care of, you know, with Jared, we, you know, taking care of um, sponsors, taking care of season ticket holders, groups, all those things. So is it lighter for you doing it this way? Is it well, easier for you? Should I leak any of this? Because I feel like 24 seven is coming very soon to do a documentary on what goes on here, but uh, you'll get to see it all yeah. behind the scenes. But no, it is, uh, it's a lot of work and I encourage anyone to, you know, try to take on these challenges and you know, this are things, these are things that I've had to do over the last 12 years in other markets and uh, you know, we've made those markets successful and they're still around and they're still doing well. And uh, you know, the one I started off with, uh, Barry, they're actually in a different league, but you know, uh, they actually made a coaching change today too. Oh, they did. It must be in the yeah. water. We, yeah, we won't, <laughs> we won't even mention their name, but uh, you know, Google me, you'll know where I was before. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, their Port Huron, it's, you know, it's just been one of those things we've, you know, wanted to build hockey up in these communities, grow the game, you know, make sure we get more youth kids on the ice every yeah. year, get more young families out to games every year, and let people experience hockey. And down here on the coast, we have a lot of transplants that grew up with hockey and love it, and we have a lot of natives who, you know, you, you have the mix. Old Seawolves fan, you know, knows hockey, yep. and then you got new Seawolves fan, this is their first go around and they're having a blast and yeah. everyone's meshing and gelling well and uh i just want to say i've said it three times today or more thank you guys you were so patient awesome. over the last couple of weeks uh it wasn't easy and uh you know we want to entertain you we want to impress you and uh we want to hear you cheer more and we know when we score goals and we win games you cheer really loud and our players love it, I love it, and uh, you know, it gives me goosebumps it just is. thinking it about is. when that goal horn hits and they start going nuts and that hey song starts. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. like it's there's fun. nothing better. It's it's amazing. I, I don't know, maybe our starting it like our intros could get better. I yeah, we're working on it. I think we're I, I think we're working I, on it. It's, I it's got something be awesome. up this sleeve. Maybe this sleep, it's up a sleeve. I got something for we, you guys. We, Welcome back in to your first intermission report. That's a word from Joe Pace and the Seawolf CAO, Sarah Corman. As we talk about Joe Pace stepping into that coaching role, and you know he definitely has to be feeling the pressure, especially with a situation like this where 14 games into the season, this technically being the 14th, and, you know, there's a lot of expectations here of, you know, a, a quick turnaround and, you know, if you listen through the entirety of that interview, you hear Joe talk about us having a relatively shorter season compared to some of the other uh, minor professional hockey leagues, 56 regular season games here in the Federal Prospects Hockey League compared to, say, 72 and the ECHL, and then even more if you look at things like the NHL. So you have a shorter leash if you're trying to turn things around and uh, make a nice playoff run if you go into a 2-9-2 and two hole, much like the Seawolves and Mammoth both find themselves in right now. So games like tonight and tomorrow certainly have meaning. Someone's got to win. Someone's got to break that drought. So we will see how it goes. Again, one to nothing. The Mammoth up over the Seawolves at the first intermission from Elmira, New York. As we take a look up and down the score sheet, of the opening 20 minutes, the shots on goal are at 14-9. Seawolves up over the Mammoth. 
but the lone goal went in Elmira's favor from Stavros Soilis. The assist from Yanni Liriakos and Chris Maritea. 11.05, the official time of that goal. Well, Mayatea was able to chip it ahead for Liriakos. It was a two-on-one opportunity from there. Liriakos just tapped it off to his right side for Soilis. They were just a couple of feet apart from each other, and Soilis just fired it on in over that left shoulder of Seawolves goaltender Ian Wallace, who's in his first game with the team tonight. Only one penalty to speak of in the opening 20 minutes as well. That came from Cordell Boyko of Elmira, a tripping minor at 18.23 of the first period. So there will still be 23 seconds of a carryover Seawolves power play uh, by the time we get into the second period officially. So with all things considered, let's move into your FPHL out-of-town scoreboard. Right here in the state of New York, the Binghamton Black Bears up over the Watertown Wolves, 3-2. to two. Actually, it's flipped around Watertown with the 3-2 to two edge over Binghamton, I beg your pardon. Black Bears hosting that one. Just about an hour away from us here in Elmira, the Delaware Thunder deadlocked with the Motor City Rockers at one apiece, just about an hour into their game. The Columbus River Dragons playing from behind one to zip as they're hosting the Danbury Hattricks. And we also have another 1-1 game. The Carolina Thunderbirds clashing with the Port Huron Prowlers in another game that started at 735 Eastern, much like us here at First Arena, with the score 1-0 Elmira. Six and a half minutes until we begin your second period. Let's extend that out-of-town scoreboard into the NHL side of things. We only have three games going on as we speak. The New York Rangers doing battle with the Ottawa Senators tonight. That's another 1-1 game. Say it with me now, folks. 8.46 to play in their second period from New York. Nashville Predators able to draw first blood against the New York Islanders. It's 1-0 at the end of the first period. The midway through the opening stanza is the Columbus Blue Jackets jumping out to a 1-0 lead on the Winnipeg Jets. So that is all she wrote for NHL games, just three across the docket tonight. And then you have plenty tomorrow, a total of 13. That's usually how it goes, especially here in the FPHL. It seems like more often than not, you'll have eight teams playing on a Friday, 10 on Saturday. As we stand right now, 517 remains in this first intermission. And that only goal comes from Soilus of the Mammoth with a 14-9 shot song goal lead for the Seawolves. And Mississippi coming here to first arena after a very lengthy bus ride. Of course, that goes without saying, coming from the Mississippi Gulf Coast all the way here to upstate New York. They were able to stop in Huntsville, Alabama yesterday for a quick practice. So they're able to come together after about six hours on the bus and then after that they just hustled through with the remaining 14 or so here to First Arena. And the Seawolves in that opening period, they saw a little bit of miscommunication with the passing. It seems like that's been a bit of concern over the past month or so since this big losing streak began, but even on the man advantage, we saw almost some costly turnovers, but even the Elmira Mammoth having a couple of miscues themselves where they were ending up squandering chances uncontested in front of Ian Wallace. So Wallace will have a couple of lucky breaks, whether it's Elmira mistakes or a little bit of puck luck as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how Joe Pace rallies up the troops here at the first intermission and what team we're going to see in the middle 20 minutes coming up just moments from now, 3.45 to go in this first intermission with the score 1-0 Seawolves working from behind against the Elmira Mammoth. You're tuned in to the Mississippi Seawolves YouTube page.
Getting ready to begin your second period here from Elmira. One to nothing to score Elmira. Currently with the edge to hosting Mammoth. Playing the Seawolves just one of two times this season. That second game being tomorrow. That will be a 535 Central start here at First Arena. Catch all the action right here on the Mississippi Seawolves broadcast network. As you can see on your computer screen, those are a couple of the home games on the way to Mississippi Coast Coliseum. That next one being Friday, December 9th, a week from tonight when the Carolina Thunderbirds visit Biloxi. They'll carry that series into to the day after that, Saturday, December 10th. And then that third matchup that you see listed, Friday, December 16th against the Port Huron Prowlers. Port Huron will be making their third game and second trip overall of the season at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Players making their way back out onto the ice as we get ready for your middle 20. One more pause in the broadcast. Second period coming on the way after this. Let's get things going for your second period of play. One to nothing, the Elmira Mammoth up over the Mississippi Seawolves with a lone goal coming from Stavros Soilis. At 11.05 of the first period, the puck is down, and we have 18 seconds left on a carryover power play uh, for the Seawolves. That penalty going against Cordell Boyko in the final moments of the opening period. Proudlock squeezes tight off to his right post, and while the faceoff over to his right, now nine seconds into the middle stanza from First Arena. McKittrick jumping in there against Jacob Wolf. And it's white back for Costello. Now Bush Anderson looking down the rink. Costello at the hash. Backwards for McKittrick. Tries centering for Bush Anderson. Three seconds left on the power play. Bush Anderson lets it fly. Hopper coming in for Proudlock and he'll jump all over that one. As we go back to five on five, Cordell Boyko out of the box. And the Seawolves now 0 for 1 on the man advantage. That was the only power play we've seen from either side so far on this Friday. On the ensuing draw, this will come over to the far wing. And it's stalled behind the cage, flicked up to Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson down towards the top of that far circle. Getting doubled up on there was Matt Carancy, and it's wound up back to the Seawolves blue line. Now 45 seconds into the second period. Bush Anderson goes wide side for Blake Cudmore. Cudmore tried finding Carancy down the ice, but that goes shy and all the way down for Proudlock. Proudlock dumps it over to the tight angle. Wong almost caught him sleeping behind the cage, but it was just a couple seconds too slow. Now Falanga. Able to maneuver across the point. Works it down towards the half wall and has it corralled away. Now for Mike Falenga. Falenga on the side of the net, peels in front and couldn't get it off of the forehand. At the center logo, stolen by Campbell. Drops it back, right circle, left side again. Backhand shot, no can do. That's Ian Wallace getting out the left leg. 
So it's blocked on out to the neutral ice. Lucas Helen sends it ahead for Ulmer, but Mo Levac able to intervene. Levac stick to stick with Cordell Boyko. Now it's Ulmer on side for the Seawolves, kicked away by Martea. On the right hash, stirred up against the Dasher board, and the Mammoth are back in the attacking ice. Below the end line for Don Carter. Carter able to spiral it, left circle, back to the low slot, and the centering feed could not get worked out for Nick Golo. Played two minutes of this second period in a one to nothing Mammoth lead. Seawolves fire it in, leading to an icing. Fans, you have a group of 20 people or more? Bring them into the Mississippi Coast Coliseum all season long with our group ticket plans. Discounted group tickets start at $11 per person and can be purchased by calling the Seawolves front office at 228-999-8333. That is 228-999-8333. Play comes back down to the Seawolves ice. They skate from right to left across your computer screen in the second period as it's knuckled to the low slot and another one scraped over the crossbar. Costello wedging it off of the end wall for Payne. Tim Payne flies it on out to center at the middle logo. It's Levac able to skip it backwards for Pekarski and going to get things going in that triangle they had past Ulmer. Now it's a pair of Seawolves at their own blue line. It's Powell striding ahead towards the center red. Now drops it on back for Joe Pace. Left circle, this is sent a mile high by Tim Connor and it barely stays in play. So it's Pace with a bouncer coming out in between the benches. Now confiscated by Barr. Barr with open room down on the left circle in front of the net, centering pass off the skate of Yevdikimov. Yaroslav Yevdikimov not able to get the stick out in the way. The Seawolves gang it. Another go. It's Yevdikimov with the trailer to Bor. Bor, right circle, shot, and it doesn't reach the cage. That might have been the best chance the Seawolves have had so far when it comes to evening up the score, but there remains one to nothing Mammoth. Now the Mammoth are in the enemy ice, right circle chance, and it's taken off the body of Pace, redirected over for Ian Wallace, and he will smother it with the oven mitt. 16.26 to go in the second period. Seawolves down by one. That only goal coming from Stavro Soilis at 11.05 of the first period. Assist from Liriakos and Martea. Glove hand face off coming for Wallace. It's pushed behind the net courtesy of Blake Cudmore. Now sped out to neutral. Currency. A one-on-one -on -one and a man following from behind. Carancy trailing down that right wall behind the net for Wong. Wong off the backhand, front and center, and Falenga couldn't keep it across the point. Mammoth carrying it through the point into the left circle, back down the middle, and it was chipped out of midair by Tate Leeson. Batted off of the corner wall. Now it's Carancy trying to defeat his man Chris Martea, but the biscuit pops high and on to the Mammoth bench. 4.08 gone by in the second period and the Mammoth hanging on to a one nothing lead here in your second period. Players gather in front of the Mammoth bench and it's the Seawolves. Trying to get moving, it ends up reversing over for Ian Wallace and he has the scoop on the glove side. Well, a decent crowd here in Elmira on this Friday night. Nice little New York City. About 26,000 people in the population and again, a place with a lot of hockey history over the past two decades or so. Had some UHL and ECHL here in First Arena and then an hour away, you have Binghamton, where the Seawolves played a pair of games earlier on in the 2022-23 season. So it's the Seawolves possessing behind the netminder. Wallace slammed out the center. Costello able to wedge it past Solis. Now Solis earns it right back. Rink wide, and it's offside against Elmira. 
here at First Arena. Just about 3,784 seats. And the Mammoth also sharing this facility with the new Elmira Renegades, a professional box lacrosse organization. So it's the Mammoth back from square one in air ice. And the drop comes for Martea in the near corner. Goes rank wide. Back over in front of the penalty box wall. Dalton Anderson with speed, but Helen cuts him off. Down on the far end wall, tight angle shot. Peppered out the center. Martea standing still at the center red inside the point now for the incoming Stavro Soilis. Trying for a second of the game. But he's redirected behind the cage. Back on top of the left circle. That's off the midsection of Ian Wallace. Couple more seconds being killed off. And it's Lucas Helen rolling on out the neutral. Tucked over on the right point. Wide side, bar releases. And again, Thomas Proudlock wore it on the crest, forcing the next stoppage. Well, it seems like a lot of these Seawolves chances going right to the gut of Proudlock, and he's just been able to hang on from there. So we're definitely going to have to switch things up, get a bit more creative in that enemy ice as we have your first media timeout of the second period, 14.35 to play. Score stands 1-0 Mammoth on the Seawolves broadcast network. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your Seawolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. Back after the media timeout, 14.35 to play in your second period with a 1-0 score. Elmira up on the Seawolves. Justin Barr on the draw, got it over for McKittrick, but the officials decide we're going to do it again. The only goal came in the first period from Stavro Soilis of the Mammoth at 11.05. Since then, it's been a bit of a stalemate between the goaltenders Ian Wallace of Mississippi and Elmira's Thomas Proudlock with a face-off coming in his ice. McKittrick fights at left point for Payne. Payne shovels it over the crossbar. Back over on the right wall. Now scooped through center. It's a chance for Don Carter, and he got taken away by Tim Payne off of the end boards. Four men just jousting away for it behind Wallace. The scuffle continues, and McKittrick climbing up the far glass out the center for Yevdokimov, the Seawolves' top scorer. You have to come off, left it back, ends up finding Powell. Powell with the sail onto Thomas Proudlock, and he'll keep the action going in the midst of a big Seawolves line change. Golo Alexa go for a dump in change, and Elmira with a little readjustment of their own. Played 6.15 of this second period. Seawolves looking for their first of the game, down by one as Crawford. Tried pushing it to the low slot. Nobody home there in the Mammoth purple and orange uniforms. Now Wong, two on two. High slot chance. That zips side of the cage by Carancy. Now it's Epright working it right corner. Wong to Carancy again. Far side point. Dug out of the skates of Susi. And Proudlock will hold it on the leather. And we mentioned Proudlock. Spent the first month of the regular season with the Seawolves team. And one of the advantages that Mississippi very well may have is knowing how Proudlock operates and how they can get a hold of him. But so far, he has been golden. Dribbler in, save made. Proudlock able to waft it behind the cage. In front again, and they still can't solve him. Proudlock on top of the biscuit. And the Elmira fan showing them some love. All 18 chances turned away here from the Seawolves. Mammoth with a total of 11 shots and a 1-0 lead.
Players swatting sticks in that right circle and the Mammoth have another face-off win. Pace hangs it on the inside of the blue. Rink wide. Now it's shipped out to the air for Soilus. Soilus slowly striding out to the neutral zone. Goes down with Pace manning him up front. No call was made at first. Eventually we get the whistle. And it's an infraction against Pace of the Sea Wolves. And for the first time of the night, we see the Mammoth head to the man advantage. Pace getting called for the trip. And we have a mammoth man advantage with the power play percent coming in 17.6%. That's eighth in the Federal Prospects Hockey League. Seawolves struggling on the penalty kill side of things, just 75% on the killer rate, ninth in the league. So we'll get the face off going in that right circle. It's dished over to the corner. Ulmer winds it up the near glass, out the center, past Barr. So you have the clearance in the direction of Thomas Proudlock. And Proudlock will backhand it to the end boards. Now it's Mo Levac leaving it behind. Parker Moskul fighting through traffic. Moskul. The top threat for this Elmira team, putting up incredible points through the course of this season already. An outstanding 13 game point streak. The fourth year pro, more than a moment, backhander, and again, that's off the mark. Moscow, 32 points in 13 games with the Mammoth. Definitely one to look out for, as we're now eight minutes into the second period. Seawolves down, one to nothing. And we have 105 left on the penalty for Joe Pace. One zone to the other we go on the clearance. This time Proudlock remains in the blue paint. Moskula retrieving. He tries going 200 feet down as it's popped up in the air, cut by Carancy. Carancy on the left half wall. A three-man battle, fourth man now in there for the Mammoth and eventually stung free for Wong. Philip Wong able to waft it away for Proudlock. Now Proudlock able to touch it up couple of hands coming up from multiple officials here. We'll see what that's about as the play is blown dead. Now 33 seconds ago on this Seawolves penalty kill, the Mammoth's first man advantage of the game. Well, no more developments coming after the stoppage, but we do have a face off in the Mammoth ice. Fed to the high slot, Payne trying to go all or nothing. And he's shut down by Proudlock. Crawford taking some big competition from Carancy. Carancy backs it for Powell. Powell with a soft hopper towards Proudlock. He'll paddle it to the right corner and the Mammoth try and carry it outside. Campbell now dipping back around the cage, cycling it up the left wing. Now it's uncontested. Way back there, finally someone gets there for the Mammoth. That's Tate Leeson, pace back into the game. Both sides 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. Shot from a sharp angle. Skitters up to the right point. Tim O'Connor keeping it in for Elmira. And it's lasered out across the center line for Yev Dikimov. Skied behind Wallace's net. He'll touch up. Back out in front on the carom. And Justin Barr able to come to the rescue. A scary play. Wallace ended up losing his paddle and he's finally able to collected in the low slot. Now approaching the midway marker of this game. 10 minutes gone by in the second period with a one nothing Mammoth lead in period number two. Blake Cudmore putting the brakes on at the end wall, waiting for a Seawolves to set up shop. Now motions for McKittrick across center ice. Played on a funny bounce for Barr and he has to give it away. Turned over for Cordell Boyko and his mammoth debut. Now McKittrick gang the better of him and he'll get the backhander for Yevdikimov. Yevdikimov on the Seawolves far circle. Goes rink wide for Cudmore. Cudmore now a breakaway into the low slot. Backhand, forehand, what a save made by Proudlock. 
Dakota Ulmer in a Seawolves debut had it looking so good. Receiving that breakout pass at the blue line and at one point you could tell he almost juked Proudlock out of his skates there. I don't know if he mishandled in that transition backhand to forehand, but Proudlock somehow able to get in front and keep the Seawolves off the board single-handedly. It's 1-0, 9.24 left in the second period. More hockey coming your way on your home for Seawolves hockey. Midway through this Friday night action at First Arena in Elmira, New York. Seawolves down one to nothing to the Mammoth. Five on five hockey, face off in the right circle of the Elmira territory just off to my left. So it's rolled up the pace at the blue line. Pace lets it fly and it's laced wide left. Pinball the right side and it hit the outer lining of the net. Seawolf is starting to get some form of momentum, but it's a matter of just threading the needle. Helen on the end boards. He's tending for Parker Moskal. Peeled in front. Costello into the low slot. Tried the centering pass for Ulmer, who just before the break had an incredible breakaway against Proudlock, but Proudlock had the rejection to keep it a 1-0 game. Pace feathers it back for Ulmer at the blue line. Now point to point. It's Costello with a man in the slot. Costello, left circle, try guiding it to the blue line. Pace with a big slapper. That leaves a scuff off of the back wall and Elmira is still unable to clear. Took a couple of tries there from Dalton Anderson before he's finally able to maneuver out to the neutral zone. And Pace giving it another run. Pace, one handing through center. They're on side. Down low for Wong, tried kicking it on to the tape, but no can do. Throttled out to center. It's Mo Levac. Levac trying to navigate between a pair of Seawolves, but he gets cut off at the right side of the point. Wong trying to work him down to a skate. Now it's Martea with an open view at center ice. Martea at his own blue line. Dangles past Falanga. Two more men to beat. Makes way for Levac. Levac down the far wall. Able to record a shot on. Wall is squeezing the wickets together. Now it's Falanga. With the counter, Levac able to jam him up. Bush Anderson trying for some Mississippi reinsurance. But the Mammoth coming back in, trying to up this 1-0 lead to the high slot. Nice chance coming from Nick Golo, but he put it right into traffic. Now Falenga trying for a break, but Tim O'Connor proves to be too fast. Around the back of the net, Falenga tries to outlet it to the high slot. And it goes horribly wrong for the Seawolves. Bush Anderson trying to regroup with McKittrick. The puck all alone at the penalty box wall. Levac using his height to his advantage here. This goes in the air. Landing still in play on the nearer wing. Right side corner. You have to come off behind in a scramble. And we have a delayed penalty against Elmira. So here we go, folks. The Seawolves heading to the power play for the second time in the night. Down one to nothing, 6.52 until the end of your second period. A shove from behind by Don Carter on to Daniel McKittrick. It's a cross check to Carter. And the Seawolves given a five on four, another go. And you remember earlier on here in the second period, the Seawolves able to get right in front of Thomas Proudlock, but just haven't been able to actually seal the deal. Susie starts up the power play alongside Ulmer. Ulmer chokes it up to Nathan Campbell. Campbell trying to dump it away, and he does exactly that. Now that the middle of the ice for Jacob Wolf. Wolf releasing into that left circle. Vinny Susie 
Slamming on the brakes on the trapezoid area. Sea Wolves skating right to left, on out the center ice. Across for Bush Anderson, and he trails to Susie. Susie down the right wing. Now it's Dakota Omer surveying. Bush Anderson on the near point, 121 left on the Sea Wolves power play. Their second of the game. Susie golfing it down the far wall. At the hash, it's Carancy again, doubled up, and an easy steal for Nathan Campbell. But it's kept in. Bush Anderson splitting the point. Knocks it down low at the left circle for Ulmer. Ulmer to Susie. Big blast. And that's worn off the equipment of Jacob Wolf. Quite the sacrifice as it's lasered out the center and onto the Mammoth bench. 52 ticks remaining on the infraction to Don Carter of the Mammoth. 544 left in the second period. Your score, the Mammoth 1, Seawolf 0. Center ice draw, and Yevdokimov wasting no time into the Mammoth ice left circle. He's whacking away at it towards Powell at the point. Powell down at the half wall. McKittrick gets it to him. Sent over for Barr. Barr returns for Powell. Powell winds up, and it's tapped behind the cage. Back upstairs, Powell. Now McKittrick on the doorstep. Backhander to Powell, glove save, proud lock. He continues to have himself one heck of a knot. Knight stopping the 23rd shot of the game now for the Seawolves. Now approaching that final media timeout, 5.15 to go. 23 seconds to spare on this Don Carter Mammoth penalty. We have a tie up on the face off. Stung over for Powell on the blue. Corralling in from the near side. Now it's Costello at the half boards. Costello looking low. Backhander on the proud lock and he stymies that chance immediately for the stoppage of play. Carter up to his feet in the box. He's got seven seconds until he is released. And the Seawolves bringing on a new change, led by Tim Payne. Dakota Ulmer following him on, and they'll have to turn back around as we have a media timeout down to the last five minutes of your middle period. Seawolves trailing one from upstate New York. one has gone by in your middle period from Elmira, New York. First arena, the location where the Seawolves are down one to nothing against the Elmira Mammoth. Seven seconds left on a Seawolves power play. Don Carter in the Sinbin. The faceoff coming for Proudlock's blocker side. It'll be Helen against Levac. And right away, the Mammoth win the draw. Tim O'Connor shuffles it right point. Up but not out. Over on the end line. This is Epright. Couldn't stretch out the hand far enough. And we're back to five on five. Seawolves 0 for 2 on the power play. Epright shooting into traffic. And that kicks off a Mo Levac. Here come the Mammoth to the neutral zone. It's Carter. Dishing it out to the left circle. Carter with a backhander to Payne in the corner. Payne. Rubbing shoulders with Levac, just behind the goaltender Ian Wallace. His first game with the Seawolves. Tight angle chance. Man goes down for the Mammoth. And that is a Seawolves penalty. Going delayed for now. Gallo went down over a stick. And after they killed off a penalty of their own, Elmira gang treated to a two-minute man advantage. Marvin Powell, the guilty party. 
and it's another trip. Only one infraction in the first period. We've now seen three combined so far. Emotion starting to pick up as well. Seawolves trying to play with a sense of urgency again, trying for their first win in 10 games. The Mammoth found themselves in that same exact situation to start the season, but coming into tonight, they were able to find at least one point in the standings over the past three games. So perhaps this is an improved Mammoth team trying to gain some further ground on the Seawolves. Mammoth up 1-0. Four minutes to go in the second period. Tied up by Liriakos. Liriakos cycles at the Moscow right point. Glove save made by Wallace. And the faceoff is slated to take place in that right circle. Fans, you want your organization to participate in a fundraiser? Whether you're a school club, youth sports team, local charity, or any other organization, your Mississippi Seawolves want to help. For more information, please contact Corey DeMond at 228-999-8333. So on the draw, 30 seconds remain on that Marvin Powell penalty. Seawolf is down the man, almost a breakaway for Ulmer, but it slipped underneath his stick. And now Proudlock got picked off by Ulmer. Nod able to steer it out in front, and it shimmied out to the neutral ice. Mammoth with numbers. Into that near circle for Soilis, trying for a second of the game. Drops the anchor at the corner and they score. Parker Moskul, that top scorer for the Mammoth, going right underneath the bar. And that is his 33rd point in his 14th game this season. It went from the right point down there towards that goal line. And Moskul just had an absolute snipe. You could hear the ding of the iron all the way up here in the broadcast booth. As the Mammoth make it 2-0, 318 on the board here in period number two. So the Seawolves hold just got that much further. And a man just got buried right into the Elmira bench. That was Tim Payne having to quickly make his way back over. And the puck skipped out of the play. Goal announcement being made. Soilos and Liriakos on the assist. So Soilos now with a multi-point game, one goal and one assist. Now with under three minutes to go in the second period. Seawolves down two to nothing. Some rough play coming on to McKittrick. On we go with Tim O'Connor. Joined by Daniluk. And this is another one which flips on to the penalty box area. The first goal of the game came from Soilus of the Mammoth in period number one. And Mammoth able to increase that for the time being two to nothing with a nice tight angle blast. Moscow will getting the job done. And it's pitched in deep by Wong to the left corner. Seawolves in the opposing ice. Whipped over right circle. That's Barr to Bush Anderson. Now Carranci added to the mix as well. Wong loses his stick. Now in a stalemate with Martea. Now Falenga all alone. Backhander fanned on, a rebound to the body. Mad scuffle on the side of the net. And we have a whistle and an altercation to follow. Liriakos making a beeline for Matt Carranci, who is trying to follow up on that loose puck, which Proudlock was already jumping on. And cooler heads prevail this time around. Mammoth bringing a fresh new five men onto the ice. 2-11 until the second intermission. And the Seawolves 
working down by a pair. Wong coming up short in the faceoff, and the Mammoth will crank the puck to the left point. Cudmore right there. We'll wedge it between a pair of men, but it's the Mammoth extending the center ice. And even up two on two, stick lift over for Wong, and Wong absolutely forces his man into the half wall. Shots on goal 25 15. Seawolves on top in that category. A little bit of a feeling out process through the opening half of the game between these two sides, but. You know, the Seawolves know Tommy Proudlock very well and vice versa. The former Seawolves goaltender gang to start tonight for the Mammoth. And Falenga surging down the right wall, slowed behind the cage. And that's enough time for Don Carter to escape the center. He'll return it down the rest of the way. Carter behind the cage, bodied up. It's Marvin Powell. Trying to outlet it for Falenga, but it skitters between his skates and all the way for Nathan Campbell. Turned aside, Seawolves chance, right circle. Helen, left wing, and he put it over the bar again. Well, that was Helen's first try at it, but the Seawolves right now just not able to get out of their own way, it seems. Proudlock had good coverage in front of that shot anyway. Big blast by Powell. Glove hand save by Proudlock, using it like a catcher's mitt. Clock stops with 47 seconds left until the break. We see a bit of fatigue here from the Seawolves, just based on the body language. And, you know, that's been one of those things that they've had to work on, especially in the later stages of games. We've seen them carry advantages into the third period only for it to be squandered later. And that's something that the newly named head coach, Joe Pace, has been working on with the team. Just getting the legs underneath them, get the speed moving and stick handling as well. They've been having to just drop it down to the basics. And of course, with a two nine and two start, Sometimes it's just what you have to do to pinpoint exactly where things can improve. But the Mammoth spiked the puck into the attacking ice. Back the other way comes Powell for Yevdikimov. Yevdikimov trying to crash the front of the net, but he's brought down to his feet by Chris Meritea. Jostled to center. Mammoth odd man rush. Left circle, far side, backhander across. That doesn't get on. Follow up just over the head of Wallace. You have to come off. One last chance with three seconds to go. They'll just have to lob it on. And Proudlock with the rescue. And after 40 minutes of play from Elmira, New York, the score, the Elmira Mammoth 2 and the Mississippi Sea Wolves 0. So as we head into the intermission report, we'll play some more continued coverage of that interview we had this past Monday between New head coach Joe Pace and CAO Sarah Carmen. Again, two periods in the book. Seawolves down by two. It all started with a first period goal from Stavro Soilis. And it was added onto by Parker Moss School in this second. We'll be back in a couple of moments. But for now, here's continued coverage of that interview on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. So I've got a question for you, and this is this is coming strictly from a girl who's gotten to see coaches' interviews previous. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the guys this, the guys that. Let me ask you this. If something happens where we aren't winning, where we are struggling still, whatever, what is your stance on that? Is that from the guys? Is that a coaching thing? Like, how do, how do we address that? Uh, I was raised playing for my father. I got to actually play pro hockey under my dad as well and work with him. And uh, we you know, have a family motto. When the team wins, the players play great. When the team loses, the coach did not prepare his team. And that. that's why we're in this situation today. And uh, you know, I don't like having to do this. I got three little kids at home. I wanna spend more time at home, but this is how we feed our children. Yeah. And uh, this is very important to us and like our community now. We moved here and we wanna live here the rest of our lives. Like, I don't want to leave the Gulf Coast ever. 
Right. I agree. So. I feel that way. And, if, you know, it's interesting that you talk about, you know, hockey up north and hockey elsewhere. I mean, I came from a town there. Hockey was huge. So it is interesting coming into this market. What should fans expect now um, that we're, we're going forward? Um, you know, the team seemed to have more fun. We're seeing more gelling. Do you think this is going to lead us towards a win? No, no, yeah, we're we're gonna start winning games, but you know what you know they should be prepared for is to get up at games, get excited, and get behind your sea wolves because our players love to hear our fans howl, baby. They do, and I I, I no. will say it's it's so much fun, and and our fans have been great about it. I mean, they really have like. The last couple of games especially I've noticed a lot more cheering and a lot more excitement and just a lot more just oomph and it's been amazing like our fans really are some of the greatest fans in the league I've been all over different leagues different areas different barns and it's been right here it feels at home um I guess the last question I have for you is that it says interim head coach are we looking for a new head coach are we taking our time on that can you answer some of the questions that go along with that uh it, you know title's a title I don't even pay attention to them anymore. But uh, it, I would, I would like to field applications. You know, okay. it, you know, this is why, you know, coach was brought on. Phil was brought in here for me to work with someone and you know build our organization. And uh, you know, people might not want to believe it or whatnot. I lived it, and uh, you know, I I need to change. The players need to change. Our organization need to change. And uh, it just had to be done. You know, the record, you know, this, we all are in a performance-based job. Mm -hmm. uh, our goalies, our forwards, our defensemen, you know, our coaches, you know, that's how it works around our league. If you don't perform, you don't have a job anymore. Right. And, uh, you know, I think fans forget about that sometimes when they get attached to a player or a coach. Right. Any sort of personality, if they're attached to them or they have any sort of connection, it's sad to see them go, and it is. It is. And uh, you know, it's sad to be the one to let them go. And you know, it's definitely part of the business, and it really stinks. But you know, if I didn't like it, I'd just quit. Right. For sure. All right. Well, do we have any fans on that are asking questions? <clears throat> we do have one question. I have a question. Uh, it says, "What are you going to do when you get in a fight and you get put out the game? How is the coaching going to go?" Well, so. When we prepare for these games, we prepare for anything. And at any moment, any coach could be kicked out of a game, even if he's in a suit. And we're always prepared to know who's up next, who's playing against who, and what our assignments are. And my, you know, my team in Port Huron never had a problem with me getting kicked out. They actually probably played better when I got kicked out because they didn't have me hollering at them anymore and checking in on them. They were able to just go do their own thing and uh, be successful. But uh, yeah, it was like a, it was like a weird curse blessing in Port Huron. I'd get a penalty and we'd score on the penalty kill. So I'm like, oh, I hurt my team, but then we scored. And it happened over and over and over. Uh, you know, thanks to guys like Don Jay and Austin Federley. Uh, I mentioned these guys, you know, I was with a lot of them for, you know, the full six years or seven years I was in Port Huron. So we have uh, some strong bonds and I like playing against them. But, uh, you know, one day if I saw any of those guys that I mentioned in a Seawolves jersey, I would not be upset at all. But uh, yeah, I guess, you know, it's the way we prep, you know, that everyone will know what to do and there'll be no confusion. Uh, it says, have you thought about being a full-time coach and wear the suit you would rock, Gojo? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, the body only can take what we do so long. And uh, I've been blessed, you know, knock on wood, been healthy and, uh, you know, Obviously, you slow down with age, but uh, you know what I bring to the team now is the energy, the excitement, you know the you know the veteran presence. So you know as as we age, you know hopefully someone younger steps up to the plate. But uh, don't be talking about how old you are. I'm older than you. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, it it you know obviously an option, but uh, you know if I'm riding that bus, I'm playing because I'm so angry when I get off of it. There's no way I'm standing in a suit. Besides, who's you going to dance with if you go off the ice? Then we would have a pretty boring league real fast. <laughs> uh, Maria says, will Justin Bard be the assistant coach slash captain now? 
Uh, he's always our captain. So, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is an honor to have Justin down here as our captain. He's someone who grew up minutes away from me in Chicago. We played at the same youth organization. He was a year older than me. And uh, then we ended up playing pro hockey against each other and then finally with each other. And, uh, you know, I didn't see him for, oh, gosh, it was almost like five, six years. And moved to Biloxi, Mississippi, <laughs> and he lives right down the street. And we did not plan it at all. That's and, awesome. uh, yeah, when he found out what we were trying to do here, uh, you know, it was, like, it was an emotional time. And I was so happy to be able to bring hockey back for him. Yes. He lost he lost a family member, lost his mom, was down here, started yeah. like a new family, and he didn't have any hockey in his life. So he has a fireman, I, like I get emotional. Like well, it was so amazing to do that for a friend. For those who don't understand the hockey culture too, I mean this is a family, like I remember being back in the Pacific Northwest when the Humboldt bus crash happened and like, Every single one of us in the hockey world just grieved, like openly grieved for days. So, you know, to have someone that you're close with, close by, suffering or going through whatever, and being able to bring a hockey family around is just beyond amazing. And so um, we are blessed to have Justin, too. Justin has been an amazing person just stepping up in, in different leadership roles as well. And He's and been taking a on. rock He's been us. an absolute rock. I think, I think he's definitely, like, the kind of the calm, cool collected when I see him at least you know very calm person when like everything is going around you can just kind of see Justin is just chill and, and amazing so well you know as my world was turning last night I think uh we chatted on the phone until almost four thirty in the morning that's what he and, told me yeah you know so you know obviously we you know we run on caffeine and no sleep around here <laughs> and that's just how we get it done but uh you know he has been he has been like a glue in that locker room for like everyone, especially through these ups and downs. And you know, it you know, you say thirteen games, it's been a roller coaster of the thirteen it's been games. Crazy. Yeah. All right, everyone. That is just a piece of the interview this past Monday with Joe Pace and CAO of the team, Sarah Corman. We're here at the second intermission with the score two to nothing. The Mammoth up over the Sea Wolves. Let's recap this one so far and take you through how we got up to this point. In the first period, that's when the first goal was scored at 11.05. An even strength tally from Stavros Soilis. Assist from Yanni Liriakos and Chris Martea. Liriakos gave a little side shuffle to Soilis, who just potted home his shot in the right corner of the net. A hard one to stop for Seawolves goaltender Ian Wallace indeed, but in the second period, 16-42, it was another complex shot absolutely nailed by Parker Moskul, the top scorer of this Mammoth team. Stavro Soilis and Yanni Liriakos, the assistants on that one, so Soilis with a multi-point game, one goal, one assist, in this 2-0 situation, which we find ourselves in right now, here at First Arena from Elmira, New York. Four penalties total, two for each side for Elmira. It was Cordell Boyko and Don Carter Jr. Boyko for tripping, Carter Jr. for cross-checking. And then two penalties against Mississippi, both tripping, one against Joe Pace Jr., one against Marvin Powell, both of those in the recent second period of play. Shots on goal, 28 to 16. Seawolves controlling in that category, but have just been brilliant, or who has been brilliant rather, against the Seawolves as Tommy Proudlock in net going up against his former team. She's got a little fuel to the fire going for him tonight, and so far he has just been at times standing on his head and We've seen the Mammoth as well get a couple of golden opportunities in front of Ian Wallace, but end up just a step behind and losing any type of momentum they get, whether it's an odd man rush or a breakaway. So sometimes it's a matter of slowing things down, but doing it with a purpose. 
because what we're seeing a lot of with both sides is just getting too far ahead of yourself, moving a little further than you would like. Two to nothing Mammoth lead at the end of two periods. We're here at the intermission report. Let's take a look across your Federal Prospects Hockey League out of town scoreboard. First off here in the state of New York, the Binghamton Black Bears after a slow start have went on a rally and they're doubling up on the Watertown Wolves, six to three in Binghamton. Danbury Hattricks after an early one to nothing start have grown their lead to three, three to nothing against the homestanding River Dragons. Motor City Rockers in a high scoring affair. They have a five to four edge against the Delaware Thunder. And last but not least, the Port Huron Prowlers on the road. They have the offense moving. 5-2 they lead against the Carolina Thunderbirds. And then another quick reminder across the NHL scoreboard. Only three games going on in that realm tonight. In the third period with 13.33 to go, the New York Rangers trying to preserve a 2 to nothing, Make that a 2-1 to one edge, I beg your pardon, on the Ottawa Senators. Nashville Predators doubling up 2-0 against the New York Islanders at the end of two periods. And the Columbus Blue Jackets a 3-0 lead as they're paying a visit to the Winnipeg Jets 11:48 left in the second period. Now it's down time for this day in hockey history. Of course, a great tradition we like to bring up here in the second intermission of each game. On this day, December 2nd, 1909, the National Hockey Association, the predecessor of the NHL, was officially founded on this day. Also, December 2nd, 2021, in more recent times, Tampa Bay Lightning defenseman Zach Bogosian played a 700 game and a 4-2 win over the St. Louis Blues. Colorado Avalanche defenseman Eric Johnson played his 800th game on that same day in a 4-1 victory against the Montreal Canadiens. So two players right there, Johnson and Bogosian, each coming through with big milestones in their respective NHL careers and pro careers. Five minutes remain until we begin the third period from First Arena in Elmira, New York. Score reads Elmira Mammoth 2, Mississippi Seawolves 0. More Seawolves coverage coming on the way.
Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your sea wolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. Hockey is back. The Mississippi Seawolves are ready to pounce at the Coliseum. Great seats still remain, starting as low as $10. It's the comeback of the pack. You won't want to miss it when Coach Joe Pace and the Seawolves take to the ice. Call 228-594-3700 or visit MississippiSeawolves.com for single game tickets. Second intermission, just about all said and done as we prepare for the start of your third from First Arena in Elmira, New York. Two to nothing, the Mammoth up over the Mississippi Seawolves. So far, the Mammoth with a goal in the first period, one more in the second. At 11.05 of your first, it was Stavro Soilis. And then 16.42 of the middle stanza, Parker Moscow lighting the lamp. Both very complex shots for Ian Wallace to face on that top third of the net. And the Mammoth will try and wrap things up in three consecutive games they have registered at least a point in the standings. Two wins and one loss in overtime. Meanwhile, the Seawolves trying to snap a 10 game losing skid here on visiting grounds. You know, with both teams two, nine and two, if there's a crew to do it against the Seawolves, no, this is the one. And with it still being a two goal game, things still are reachable, of course, within these next 20 minutes. But they're definitely going to have to dig deep coming out of that locker room. Seawolves will skate from left to right across your computer screen, wearing those road white jerseys with the blue trim on the shoulders, blue numbers and lettering on the back outlined in red. Red pants, white socks, and white helmets with the mammoth. The purple threads. White numbers and lettering on the back, purple pants, orange socks, and purple helmets. As the puck squeaks back on into the Seawolf zone, Bush Anderson able to curl it up for Carancy, up and out across center ice, but stormed back on in by Campbell to the right corner. Blake Cudmore doubled up, shot coming on the side, and that Wallace able to stop it. And now it's played with on the outer lining of the cage by Liriakos. Liriakos with another touch up to Campbell. Now paddled into the near circle for Falenga. Falenga dishes out in front. Nobody home. Now a shot coming. That's another one just shy from Marvin Powell, fresh off the bench. A near breakaway for the Mammoth. That was Stavros Solaris having it just extend beyond his reach. Campbell in front of the penalty box wall. Big line drive of a shot. And that's Warren on the shoulder of Ian Wallace. Daniel McKittrick had the pass muscled a little too far ahead of him, but another breakthrough attempt. Fed off of the right corner. Up top for Payne. Payne unloads with a slap shot, and Proudlock gobbles it up in between the circles for your first whistle of the third period. 1-11 in, and the Seawolves down to the zip. As a reminder, fans, the Seawolves and Mammoth will go at it again tomorrow night. That one, an earlier start than usual, 5.35 Central Time. For all of you tuning in back home in Mississippi. As the puck is sparred over on that far corner and littered through to Don Carter. Carter unable to clear. Now fed over for Mo Levac in the rings and finally out to the middle we go. Golo at the high slot. Carter bumped into him, the two teammates rubbing shoulders. And it's sticked on out in between the benches for the nearby Tyler Pekarski. Dumped in deep, just wide of Ian Wallace. Susi on the near corner. After a couple of moments, he makes room for Payne. And this is played on a tip high in the Mammoth zone. Helen off to the races behind the net with Tyler Pekarski. Helen with the physicality taking down Pekarski to his backside. Now Helen. Trying to fix it high. Susie, midpoint slap shot save made by Proudlock. 
and he's able to deflect it off of the back glass. Susie on the right wing boards. Able to smoke it to the near circle and it's angled the other direction out to center by the Mammoth. Now 2.20 into this third period. Two goal game in favor of Elmira. And from the scores table, one handed by Ulmer. Mammoth player getting it right off of the bench and a drop pass and it's a middle of a bad change. A three on two for the Seawolves. Costello darts in right circle and puts it right to the midsection of Thomas Proudlock. And that's where they've been going all night long when it comes to the Seawolves forwards. Again, fans, we thank you for tuning in on this Friday night, wherever you may be. Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play -play on the Seawolves Broadcast Network. A special thank you to Sillies and Gulfport, Walk-Ons in Iberville, and Val Sports Bar and Grill in Ocean Springs for hosting our watch parties as usual when the team are on the road or when the team is on the road as we have a bouncing puck behind the net corralled out in front and it's played at the left circle a little slap shot wide of play Falenga on the end boards wiped out by Nathan Campbell a clean play and the Mammoth with a little room to breathe back in their ice as it's taken up the far boards now in the direction of Tate Leeson Low through pass, ends a breakaway for Crawford, and he shot it off the man, rebound on the left side. Oh my, Isaiah Crawford, oh so close to scoring against his team in training camp this year. And Ian Wallace able to stand down firm in the blue paint, taking one off the right arm, and that rebound went high, almost dropping down on the crease, but he was able to usher it away. Campbell swerves it across the blue line for Dalton Anderson. It's the Mammoth trying to get moving from back in their own zone. Aaron pass. Stolen by Daniel McKittrick. Barr feeding McKittrick again over on the nearest circle. Peeling around the back wall. And he's taken off of control by Nathan Campbell. In front again and a save by Proudlock. Barr put all he had into that ripper from the hash marks. And Proudlock wearing it like a glove again. He has been quite the hero for the Mammoth tonight. 32 Mississippi shots. Proudlock red hot stopping them all. 19 shots in comparison for the Mammoth, but they've been able to bury two. Flag down across the neutral zone. It's Soilus. Skating it across the blue line, but there was a man too far ahead, and we have a stoppage of play. 16.08 until this one is all said and done. You have Dikimov remaining on the ice here, and it's slid into that right side post by Barr, still coming up empty handed. Yev Dikimov was hoping to find some redemption after that last game. He saw his four-game point streak end this past Saturday against the Columbus River Dragons. Yev Dikimov, a Chelyabinsk, Russia native, leads the Seawolves with seven goals and 12 assists. As we have a clearance by the Seawolves lead to an icing. 4-10 gone by in the third. Two-goal advantage for the Mammoth. On the faceoff, first touch by O'Connor as he stashes it side in the net, back out in front, and the point blanker could not be ran in on by Don Carter. You have Dikimov. Engulfed by a couple of men, and it's Joe Pace recovering back in the Seawolves' low slot, banks it through center ice to Gallo, and Gallo having to shimmy his way over for Levac. Levac tried the centering pass to Nick Golo. He came up short side on that. And the Seawolves, another bit of puck luck. You have Dikimov. Slithers it on the other side of the goal line, and it's the Mammoth. Through center ice, Golo dumps it down behind Ian Wallace. 
and he'll paddle up the Vinny Susi. Five minutes into this third period. The pass goes just off to the left side of Jeff Epright, leading to a Mississippi icing. And Susie now giving a quick word to Helen. I think just a bit frustrated again with how things have gone passing wise. And plenty of close up moments for the Seawolves not coming to fruition. We have a media timeout here in the third period, 5 0 8 into the final frame. Two to nothing, Elmira Mammoth leading from New York. First media timeout of the third period has wrapped up. And the Seawolves dumping it out to center ice down two to nothing to the Elmira Mammoth. And the first matchup of a two game weekend series strutted across into that right circle by Cordell Boyko. Boyko into the low slot. And again, Parker Moskal not able to find a second of the game. That came back in the middle period. As the puck is worked at in front of the Elmira bench, Lucas Helen. Now the reversal for Vinny Susi. Susi knocks it forward. Helen down low. Shot coming on the breakaway, and they still couldn't make it work. Jeff Epright breaking through the D man, going one on one with Thomas Proudlock. And he took it right down to the ice, bouncing on top of it. Now you have Dekimov talking with Proudlock. Again, Proudlock, a former Seawolf, so you have Dekimov likely just having a friendly word or so with him. But on the face off, it's jabbed to the left point. Now knuckled down low towards you have Dekimov in front. Big scramble for it. It's loose and they score! I believe it's Daniel McKittrick with the final touch, and the Seawolves are finally on the board. The deficit is down two to one. Just a desperation play, plain and simple. McKittrick right there on the doorstep and finally just able to nudge it across the crease and the shutout is done for Thomas Proudlock. So we'll wait for that goal announcement here in the coming moments. Again, McKittrick leading the celebration back to the bench. You have Dekimov, try for the clearance, couldn't do that. Oh, look at the stick work from Liriakos, backhander at the pipe. Some saving grace there for Ian Wallace as the Mammoth almost got one right back in their favor. Here's the goal call. You have Dekimov getting the assist on that goal moments ago and Elmira driving back across over on that right side of the iron. Now fed over for Gullo. Gullo, tape to tape. Don Carter getting stuck up there for a couple of moments, low slot. And he's pickpocketed by Ethan Bush Anderson. 12.55 well, to go in the third period now. It's Wong streaking ahead with a shot and that one hit the paddle of Proudlock. Well, that first goal finally came in for the Seawolves, a two to one game now, but still some breathing room here for Mississippi. It takes a lot, but we'll see how they carry it from here. Right now it's Matt Carancy with a side shuffle over for Falenga, got a little too far ahead of him. Now Payne kicking into that mammoth center logo to Wong. Philip Wong surveying down the rink, goes circle to circle with Tim Payne. Payne. Will slide behind the cage of Wallace. Down to the near side of the goal line. Powell returning to sender. 
A little bit of dead space there for the Sea Wolves, and they come riding out to the middle zone. Levac turns it aside at the center of red. Hacked over for Leeson. Leeson with a slap shot and a glove save from Ian Wallace. I'll tell you what, since that Sea Wolves first goal of the game from Daniel McKittrick, things have gone a heck of a lot more compelling. Came into this third period down two to nothing. McKittrick able to saw the deficit in half. As we now have 11.56 to go here in this third period. You see Joe Pace currently on his shift on the ice and he's shouting out those directions to his teammates as that new player head coach. He's the hybrid man and Susie is able to rattle it outside for Ulmer. Ulmer breaks in but now they're called offside. Oh that one came a little later than Ulmer may have liked but on we go with a face off in front of that mammoth bench off to our right. Lucas Helen in the face off ends up on the short end of the stick and a dump in comes for Elmira but they beat the icing call. Have one running up on each other from the far half wall. Oh, a big hit there from Lucas Helen, and that's a penalty. Well, right away, he threw up his hands in protest, but you knew right away that was likely to get cold. And that's a big play. That's a big, big play that the Mammoth can utilize on as they head to the man advantage for the next two minutes. Oh, my. We played eight and a half minutes of your third period. Seawolves down two to one. And now going down a man. The Seawolves have a pair of short-handed goals this season. And we'll see how they can operate. Wong wipes out in the corner. Man all alone in the low slot. Cudmore able to get to him. Shot from the point, kicked away, back down on the goal side. Now Wong able to look down the fresh sheet of ice and he banks the puck all the way for Thomas Proudlaw. Now 25 seconds into the infraction on Helland. Numbers coming out across center for Elmira. And it's Mo Levac putting the brakes on. High slot dump down made by Matt Currancy. And Thomas Proudlock will start it up all over again. He'll go short side to Nick Golo. Now Golo with a trailer for Soilis. Two points tonight, one goal, one assist taken down to his knees. We keep on moving. Campbell with a big whiff on the slap shot or a bluff, a better way to put it, as he was trying to fake out the Seawolves defense. Now Liriakos swings across the line. Lobbed in the traffic, and the Seawolves able to ladle it on out the center. Mammoth trying to gain the zone once more. Moskal flips it long side. Yanni Liriakos over there on the corner boards. We've got 35 seconds left for Lucas Helen in the box for the Seawolves. Sauced up for Proudlock, wasting no time. He goes all the way down the rink for Moskul. Moskul left circle, backhand, forehand, shot, save made. Wallace on top of the biscuit, save made. And we're going to have a fight. That's Matt Carancy chucking him with Liriakos at the right corner. And they're feeding each other blows, right hand side. And down goes Carancy. It's your first fight of the night. And right now, Liriakos firing up the fans. Well, Wallace found himself in a dangerous spot, sprawled out in the blue paint, just trying to create the stoppage. And you know, that man, Liriakos, that in your face style of play, Carancy taking some exception, and he dropped him as a result. 
So that fight comes, 9.49 to go in the third period, and a two to one Mammoth lead. Still 19 seconds remaining on Helen's infraction. And we will go into the media timeout. Midway through the third period, Seawolves down by one. More hockey coming after this. Want to get in on the action? Bring your friends. With group packages of 20 seats or more, tickets start at just $11 per person. Group packages are perfect for church groups, youth groups, business outings, and more. Come together to see your Seawolves. Call 228-999-8333 today. Liriakos and Carancy going into the box for that fight they had just before the media timeout. So Carancy joining Helen in the box. He's got 19 seconds left on this penalty. And right now the officials just trying to get everything squared away with. As of right now it looks like we're going to remain five on four in the Mammoth's favor and then even things out in the next 19 seconds. Well now, Daniel McKittrick is jumping in the box. And for what reason, I'm not entirely sure here. So now there's three men on the ice for the Sea Wolves, and there's a lot of gesturing going on. We may have to wait a moment before we entirely realize what is happening here. There's six men out there for the Mammoth, and there's just... There's all sorts of mysteries going on. The faceoff is going to come just outside the Seawolf zone, near side red dot. So there's going to be a five on three for the Mammoth. McKittrick going into the box along with Carancy. We'll have to hear the PA announcement for that one. Well, it was a fight that brought us into the media timeout between Carancy and Liriakos, but now it's Carter, left circle, sweeps across. Carter added again, down on the side of the net, shot hit the outer lining of the net, open side, and it somehow stayed out. The net came off behind Wallace, and he really got away with one there. Wow. So Liriakos, five minutes for fighting. Five minutes for fighting on Currency. Plus two minutes for a cross check. And the two minutes of the cross check is being served by Daniel McKittrick. So that's interesting. So that is how it goes down. You had a cross check in there and McKittrick is the one serving that for Carancy. Huh. Well, that is what makes it a Five on four advantage now for Elmira. This thing's really got a little confusing for a couple of moments. Down we go into the left corner. Seawolves on ice. Puck is stroked to Moskul on the blue and finally freed up out to the neutral zone by Justin Barr. Barr having to D up against Moskul. Moskul flipped it back upstairs. Nobody home in that mammoth purple and orange uniform. And Don Carter resetting for Elmira. A man blew a tire there, that was Leeson. Wong back out in front. Nice little spinning pass to the low slot. This is Barr on top of the zone. Now having to pull back to the blue line and he's all the way out the center now. They'll zip it in deep to the Elmira ice. Not a bad option with 44 seconds left here on this Elmira power play. It's five on four, eight and a half minutes to go in the game. Seawolves down, two to one, two to Mammoth. Carter swinging down the near wall. Rotates it around the end boards to the right corner. For a couple of moments. Hold on to for Soilus. Soilus to Moskul. Moskul gets the return pass. Parks towards that near side. Say made rebound point blank range. And it's finally laser to the middle. Powell going face to face now with Soilus. And Soilus is getting right on him. Well, a delayed penalty is called. This is going to go against the Seawolves. And it happens again. 
Just as one penalty wraps up, another is going to begin for Mississippi. And that's been the story here of this third period so far. And the Mammoth are just going to keep this thing going. Delay it for as long as you can. Carter flinks one high and into the mesh netting. Powell getting the penalty. He's in the box for a cross check. And Joe Pace coming in to have a word with him. You can only imagine that's the coaching side of his role coming out. He can instruct guys behind the bench. But he can do it when he's on the ice alongside with him. So we'll usher the face off to the right circle. Seawolves own ice and it's propelled upwards immediately out the center by Justin Barr. Now Molovac. Working it back down to the far corner. Molovac was initially slated to come to the Mississippi Seawolves. However, there was a preseason trade which brought Marvin Powell to the Seawolves and Levac over to the Mammoth. So Powell, that's how he was able to play for his home state team, a Jackson, Mississippi native. Always worth bringing up as the Mammoth cycle it to O'Connor at the left point. Now a rink wide, right circle, it's Levac. Levac releases in the traffic and it's Philip Wong trying to clear a buck 13 to go on this PK for Mississippi. 2-1 Mammoth lead, 6.42 to go here in the third period. Save made in the pads of Wallace. Couldn't keep it in his clutches. And the Mammoth up top with a shot. And that skitters down into the corner. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd. That was another close one for Wallace as it's stick down low. Whistle blows. Wallace wasn't possessing it fully, but the stop as a play came anyway. And again, Seawolves having one go their way. Seawolves controlling and the shot's on net 35 to 29, but they're down by one with 6.25 to go in this game. 52 seconds until Marvin Powell is freed from the box. So we'll stop things up again. You have two referees standing in front of the penalty box and And it looks like maybe this is a media timeout. I'm not too sure right now. Ulmer and another man, Jeff Epright, skating to the box. Or not the box, the bench, I beg your pardon. And now we're having the center ice salute. I think that's what this is. We may be serving a media timeout, but players didn't really realize it to go back to the bench. So we're having a military salute here at First Arena. Everyone's stopping what they're doing and clapping their hands. Players banging their sticks on the ice. Always something good to see a hero salute. And they see Wolves face off back in their ice. So on the face-off, it's shoveled for Moskul. Another pad save from Wallace. Angled through center ice all the way down to Thomas Proudlock. And he'll slow it to Parker Moskul. Now 37 seconds left here on this penalty kill for the Seawolves. Marvin Powell in the box. In front of the Mammoth bench. Dished out by Carter. Back down the far boards. It's Levac. Levac gaining some ground. Now turns away from Wallace. On top of the blue line, now on the right wing. It's Levac at it again. Fans it upstairs. Cordell Boyko keeping it to himself. Big slap shot save made, and it's feathered over for Moskal again. The cycle keeps going. Powell up to his feet. Five seconds ago on the penalty. Side of the cage, it's Moskal wrapping it around the side. Top of the right circle shot. That deflects high off of Ulmer. We're back to five on five. Powell out of the box. We're back to full strength. Mammoth settling down at the center logo. Levac up the near glass. Shot by Daniluk. 
and it's squeezed on by Ian Wallace. So a big piece of the puzzle down for the Seawolves, just surviving being down a man. 5.18 left in the game, 2-1 to one Mammoth lead. The only goal we've seen here in the third period came from Daniel McKittrick of the Seawolves to cut that deficit in half from 2-1. to one. Faceoff will come off to the right side of Ian Wallace. And it's weathered up the far side, a Seawolf wiping out. That's Yevdokimov. And the Mammoth have a man tripped up. That's Jacob Wolf. Another delayed penalty against Mississippi. And they're just shooting themselves in the foot at this rate. Daniluk from a sharp angle. And finally, the touch up is made. There's five minutes left here in this game, 4.58 to be exact. And you just cannot keep doing this to yourself. Vinny Susi into the box. And this should likely take us to the final media timeout of this Friday night. Wallace helping put the net back on the moorings. Looks like this one having an especially difficult time. The officials are going to have to get involved, but we'll take a break and give you the remainder of this one on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcast Network. 2-1 to one Mammoth lead. Seawolves head to the PK after this. Back after the last media timeout of this game, 4.55 to go in your third period, 2-1 Mammoth lead, and a new power play is underway for Elmira in the box for tripping. It's Vinny Susi just before the media timeout. Levac, left circle, dips it backwards for Gullo. Gullo cycling around the end boards back up to the midpoint. Levac now near side for Moskal. Moskal returns to the sending Levac. Right circle, Levac, dancing around the high slot. Feeds left wing for Moskal and a glove save made by Ian Wallace. Now a buck 25 to go on Vinny Susi's penalty in the middle of this mammoth man advantage. And you could say it is definitely a mammoth of a man advantage here for Elmira with a chance to put this game away. Now it is a little early, but the Seawolves do have their chance at a timeout if they still want to use it. Moscow wins the faceoff, drop down on the side of the net, and it could not be put across by Don Carter. Now it's Moscow on top of the near boards, batted down, say made, rebound not going either, into the corner, and the 200 footer comes from Epright. Four minutes left here in this hockey game, two to one, Mammoth leads. Proudlock picked off at the neutral zone by Ulmer. Ulmer breaks loose. Low slot shot, and it's given away down into the corner. What a save by Proudlock. He deflected it off of the glove hand, and the Seawolves oh so close to tying this thing up on the penalty kill nonetheless. 43 seconds left in the box for Susi. Mammoth with Moskul on the near wing, just underneath the end line. Confiscated by Epright. And it's flown one side to the other to Thomas Proudlock again. 327 on the board. Elmira's time now numbered on the power play. 21 ticks to go. Moskal taking matters into his own hands with a backhand shot that flips on the outer lining of the twine. Now it's Powell with a stick going way up in the air. Centering pass. Now on the left circle. Wallace sprawling out of the cage. Shot doesn't get on. Now a two-on-one the other way for the Seawolves. It's Costello on the far side. Left circle shot, and proud lock says no, sir. So that is how this five-on-five five comes back into effect. The Seawolves so close on two different occasions on finding a shorthanded goal to tie the game. 
And now we see that timeout called by the Seawolves bench. So Joe Pace gonna rally around his troops with 2.58 to go in the game and the Mammoth up by one. And in a moment like this, all you can do, inhale and exhale. Mammoth had one goal in the first period. That one came from Soylus Stavros. And then the second period, the lone goal came from Parker Moskul of the Mammoth. They carried that two nothing lead heading into the final period. And so far, the lone strike came from Daniel McKittrick of the Seawolves, bringing us to where we are right now a 2-1 game, 2.58 to go on this Friday night, and we're back from the timeout. 2-1-2 two two for Elmira, and it's Wolf, bodied up on by Yevdokimov. McKittrick flutters it through, almost sandwiched between a pair of Mammoth. Bar with room to skate, hands off for Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson at the center of the blue line. Now Powell goes long for McKittrick across the blue line, and that's way ahead for Tyler Pekarski. Pekarski rattles at the center. Could be an odd man rush of Elmira. Hurries right side back down the middle. Shot, and what a save by Wallace. Keeping it a one-goal game with 2.13 to go. Well, you know, you cannot say anything about Ian Wallace when it comes to any negativities, he has came out here and had himself a heck of a game. Right now, the shot clock, 38 for the Mammoth. And if that is true, 38 shots, 36 stopped in your debut with the Seawolves fresh off of a trade from Port Huron, that is one heck of a day. Now we're down to the last two minutes of play. And we have a scuffle back in the Seawolves zone. The Mammoth just trying to kill off as much time as they can. Cudmore wins the battle. Now pausing behind the cage of Wallace. Helen swoops around, playing it on the far wall. Now rink wide to Cudmore. Cudmore out to the neutral zone in front of the penalty box wall. Ulmer doubled up between a pair of Elmira defenders and they'll wheel it back to their own ice. 95 seconds ago here in your third period. Short side for Helen. Helen fixes it back in front of the Seawolves bench for Bush Henderson, the freshman on the rink. Wide side, it's Helen. Helen trying to wedge it between a pair of Elmira skaters. Confiscated for Leeson on a breakaway. A backhand shot floated in. Save made and a delayed penalty against the Seawolves. And although the Seawolves have had some pretty compelling chances in this third period on the penalty kill, this may be the nail in the coffin. Bush Anderson taking a seat for holding. And now for Mississippi, it's no longer a matter of pulling that goaltender in hopes that you can bring the extra man on. You are down a man. The timeout was used by the Seawolves just moments ago. So they're left to fend for themselves here. In the remaining minute, 16 seconds. Leeson works it across. Shot hit his own man, and that takes a bounce into the safety netting. Right now, Mo Levac is a little bit confused. He's staring down the referee. I don't think he fully realized what happened there. It's almost like it went off of his helmet and over the end wall, unless if Wallace caught a piece of it. We restart the play with Moskul. On the blue line near side. Now left corner, Powell gets split up. Behind the cage, Gullo. Starts it again with Moskul. Punched out of midair, Wallace doing the honors and it's surged out to center by Carancy. Now 50 seconds ago here in the game, two to one, Mammoth leads. Levac, tended to by Payne. Down below the goal line, off of the end wall. Wong at the hash, trying to dispossess Levac. Levac dishes it to the low slot. Leeson not able to hang on. And it's Payne trying to slither it to the neutral zone. Does exactly that. Slapped across. Leeson on top of the right circle. 25 seconds to go in the game. Moskul. Open shot coming. And Ian Wallace gets the windmill motion save. 
21 seconds on the board. So the Mammoth trying to lock things down right here and right now with that two to one edge. 21 seconds left and a face off in the enemy ice. Now we're gonna have another timeout call this time by the Mammoth. So both bench timeouts have been used here. So we'll gather one last time. Seawolves off to the left, Mammoth directly over to the right. And after this one is all said and done, these teams will meet up again tomorrow night. A 6.35 central start, 5.35, I beg your pardon, for all of you tuned in in Mississippi. That would be 6.35 Eastern time for those of you here on the East Coast. Catch all the action right here on the Mississippi Sea Wolves YouTube page. Nick Rush giving you the call. Buckle up, folks. 21 seconds left in this one. Sea Wolves down by one face off in their end. It's going to be quite the magic to try and get things rolling again. So in the span of 21 seconds, you're down a man. Your hands are just about tied. And the Sea Wolves send out Powell, Wong, McKittrick, and Yevdokimov. Down on the five on four. Face off at the near side. Played at the left point by O'Connell and they reverse back towards the center logo. The net has been emptied out. Wallace back onto the bench. McKittrick to the left circle with a shot and a hit a defender five seconds ago. They're gonna scramble it in front but the pass went incomplete and that's your game. The mammoth escape. A big time two to one win here on home ice. Well, the Seawolves made things as razor sharp as they could have at the end of it all, but they come up short. Two to one, your final score. The losing streak goes to 11 games and the record 2-10 and two. The Mammoth, after starting the season on a 10 game skid, have now collected standing points in each of their last four. That is three wins, one overtime loss. They're now three, nine, and two, keeping their fourth place spot in the Empire Division over the Delaware Thunder at number five. Time for your three stars of the game. Third star of the game goes Elmira's Yanni Lirakos. As he celebrates at center ice, he didn't even make it off of the rink. Second star of the game, Parker Moskul, who scored that only goal in the second period. First star of the game is Thomas Proudlock, the goaltender and the former Mississippi Seawolf. The shots on goal count, it reads on the scoreboard, 42 to 37, Mammoth on top. So how about that? If that is correct, you had all those opportunities from each side and only three goals to speak of combined. So Proudlock is getting interviewed out on the ice and you recall some of the hardships that he endured in the first month of the season with the Sea Wolves, and tonight he gets to nod against his former team and he was lights out, plain and simple, as the Mammoth just keep it on rolling. We'll upload the score sheet one last time and send things out here on the broadcast. Again, two to one, the Mammoth win. Was confirmed 42 to 37, the shots on net in Elmira's favor. The goal scores in this one in the first period, it was Stavros Solis at 11.05. In the second period, one goal came from Parker Moskal at 16.42. In the third period, Daniel McKittrick scored the only goal for the Mississippi Seawolves. The assist from Yaroslav Yevdokimov at exactly six minutes. 
It was a loose puck that he was able to tip across the crease, but the Seawolves at the end of it all just had the penalties come back to haunt them. It was PK after PK in the dying minutes of the final stanza. Had a nice little rush there to wrap things up shorthanded, but the passing came back to bite him. That was another thing, and the Mammoth hanging on by the skin of their teeth, 2-1 to one for his big-time win against the Mississippi Seawolves at First Arena. Before we head off, we'll take one last look across your out-of-town scoreboard in the FPHL. Again, the Seawolves falling short 2-1 to one in this game. The Binghamton Black Bears have secured their big-time 6-3 to three win against the Watertown Wolves. We have a 3-3 three three deadlock between the Columbus River Dragons and the Danbury Hattricks. The Delaware Thunder working from behind 6-4 to four as they're hosted by the Motor City Rockers. You have another 6-4 to four game to Port Huron Prowlers up on the Carolina Thunderbirds. So that just about does it for this one. As a reminder, these teams will be right back at it tomorrow, 535 Central Time, Seawolves and Mammoth. From First Arena in Elmira, New York, the Seawolves will now try and break an 11-game losing streak, one that they came very close against on this Friday night. But until then, this has been Nick Rush giving you the play-by-play. -play. Thank you so much for tuning in, and so long from upstate New York. One last time, the final score, 2-1, to one, Mammoth, closing out a tight one against the Seawolves. So long, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow night for more Mississippi Seawolves hockey.